Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. Gentlemen, Adam. International Adam. Women's Day. International Women's Day. Would just like to say uh, a big thank you to all the women in our life. Yes. Uh, would like to thank all the women that listen to this show. Yes. Uh, uh, would like to spe- put a special spotlight on one Rachel Dory who absolutely killed it last episode and is coming out with a new podcast called Staff and Graph with Ian Tulloch. I am pretty excited for that because that will literally be the smartest hockey I was podcast about to out say, there. Listen to it for smart things. Yeah. It's, I was listening back and I'm just like, God, I'm dumb. Like, well, it was funny. <laughs> a couple comments were like, well, it's very clear that Rachel knows more than you and Steve. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she worked for an NHL team. <laughs> yes. Categorically, for sure. Whoa! Surprise! Where did you come up with that knowledge? Like, it, but <laughs> it was just so funny, like sitting a foot away from her, and she's like talking about things that I've been screaming about for a year and summing it up in ten seconds. And I'm just yes. like, oh, well, there it is. I there it is. It's done. When I listen back to it, I especially love what she said about the blue jackets, like saying, you know, you got to give the fans something. <sighs> I was like, wow, that is a really, really good point. And there were a lot of Blue Jackets fans who were like, yes, but we're probably going to miss the playoffs anyway. <laughs> they are a <laughs> solid point out now. It's out of their control. They lost the game in hand thing. They have, since the trade, since the big Duchesne trade, they've lost to Pittsburgh twice, and I think they play them again. It's horrifying. Do we call that du- the Duzingle trade the deadline? Duge. Do yeah, shingle. let's go with yours. Do zingle. Do zingle. If it ain't fixed, don't break it. So they've lost the game in hand. That means that literally they have to just hope that someone else falls out. They still have a game in hand on the wild card spot. Oh, oh do? yeah, over Montreal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Montreal I thought it was sit- 67 and 67. No, it's Montreal not- sits at, I'm looking at it. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> I'm telling hey, you Jesse, what I thought now. Did you, know, wrong. did you know that Rachel knows more than us about hockey? Does she? No. <laughs> I'm no. ice playing to Jesse right now. Uh, right. So... The Montreal Canadiens currently have 79 points, and Columbus has 77, and Columbus has only played 67 games. The Montreal Canadiens have played 68 games. That is tight. That spot is slowly turning into the... It's funny, the second wild card in the West is turning into a race now, Mm -hmm. rather than just everyone losing. Yep. And the East is sort of like, no, I don't want it, I don't want it, no, I don't want it. (laughs) But what if... Okay, you're Columbus. You mortgage your future, you bet the farm on this season, and the best you can do is the second wild card, and you have to play Tampa <laughs> in round one? Mm. Oh, that'd be so bad. That'd be so bad. Carolina, man, they're on a heater. They're in that top wild card spot. Speaking of Carolina, Adam, this was the big hockey Twitter news I was telling you about. Oh, there's something breaking on hockey Twitter. Can I just... Okay, is it good news? Because hockey Twitter has been extremely negative lately. It's confusing news. Okay. It is neither here nor there. I consider it to be bad. Is it neutral? It's a little bit neutral. Are you Steve Simonizing this neutral hockey thing and turning it negative? No. He, what about him, is neutral? <laughs> no, he takes neutral things and makes them negative. <gasps> oh, no. Okay. Well, uh, maybe. Let's hear it. Zach Boychuk has unfollowed everybody. Ah. <sighs> I never followed him. Well, guess what? What? He's probably unfollowed you, too. Whoa. He's followed me like 40 times. It's a little weird. He, I'm only, I think I'm at half a dozen. And he followed me consistently for a while, because we even DM'd. He's in the book, actually. Really? Yeah. I quoted him. Um, yeah, so, and he's unfollowed me. That's where it's negative. What That's where is, it's garbage. What, uh... But he's repopulating it, so I'm I'm sure I'll be back. I'll probably be what back. What is he I gotta be back, right? I'm <laughs> sure I'll be back. What exactly does Zach Boychuk do with that? With his Twitter? Yeah. I am not entirely sure. He's sponsored by DraftKings, it says. Okay. He that, says, that was all the information I had. If you're looking for more information, <laughs> you'll have to go somewhere else. Where's Zach Boychuk playing this year? He's playing somewhere. Right? HC something. Yeah. Probably. Maybe in Switzerland. So I am being Swiss about this. Or at least he is. Do you like this, Adam? Do you like what Iceberg's I, brought to the show? I don't enjoy this. This is not Why how I not? wanted the show to start. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Zach Wojcik is playing for Burn SC in Swiss A. Fire Burn. Swiss A. Wow. Fire that's, Burn. That's throwing it back. 
Love it. Ah, Former 14th overall pick in the 2008 draft. Zachy boy. I bet he was big and strong in the next Todd Bertuzzi. Five no. ten, one eighty five. No, not guy. that. <laughs> I bet he was not big and strong in the next Todd Bertuzzi. He's um no, he's from a team that I covered so much um, my year covering junior hockey, the Lethbridge Hurricanes, and they had all these draft prospects, and like none of them really stuck and had an impact. It was him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyle Beach. Do you remember Kyle Beach? I remember Kyle Beach. He was drafted by the Penguins, right? Mm, The Blackhawks. Blackhawks. I think. Wasn't there a Uh, Beach drafted by the Penguins? Colton Colton Sevier did stick. And and, uh, Lucas Spiza. Dwight King. Carter Ashton. Oh, they had Carter Ashton, too. Mitch Versteeg. The Bat (laughs) Versteeg. I didn't even know he had a brother. You're the Brent Gretzky of the Versteeg brothers. (laughs) I didn't know he had a brother. (laughs) Mitch Versteeg was on that series. Ah. So they had some guys. Brandon Brassois. The other (laughs) Brassois. I don't know if they're related. Who's No. I'm just going through the team there. Who's your goalie? Uh, I need to know. Guys, I don't know. Brandon Anderson. Oh, Adam, I bet you love this. I this hate great. all of this. This is so boring. <laughs> this is what happens when Steve starts the show. When old oh. Iceberg <laughs> comes to shore. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need, Adam? Uh, what, do you, what do you want? I want you to imagine that you're playing Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> And All right. <laughs> and then there is Am I a, blue shell guy? You're <laughs> you're a blue shell guy. <laughs> so you're trying to get by a blue shell guy and you hit it on the head once, you're like, whoa, blue shell guy didn't die, and he's throwing boomerangs at or you. Or what's what's the lightning one? Everyone's having a good time and it slows everyone down by shrinking you? Yes. Yeah, and isn't there that oh yeah, was that two? Super Mario Brothers 2 was like weird because it had aliens and stuff in it. And then oh, number I thought we were talking about Mario Kart. Oh, I thought we were talking, oh, about, Mario we were talking Kart. about Mario Kart. Oh, Mario yeah. Kart. Well, no, I'm talking about Super Mario Brothers. Oh, actually... Super There's Mario a weird Brothers. thing with Super Mario because the official Super Mario 2 is just a ripoff of a game that was released only in Japan. It's a oh. direct ripoff and they just oh. replaced all the characters. Huh. There's a YouTube wow. video about it. And then Super Mario 2, the lost levels, is just what Super Mario 2 was supposed to be. Oh. Yeah. Very That's fascinating. Wow. wow. Is it, well, because it's the only Mario of its kind. None of the other Marios are anything like Super Mario 2. Well, that's why I was going to say, like, there's, like, aliens and weird stuff in yeah. it. And you're like, why is... This doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. Let's look that up. The Super... I don't know. Just type in Super Mario 2 real. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. See? Iceberg got one. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I will contest that it also distracted from the show, but... Right. It might have been cool information, but it wasn't the show. You know who used to play Super Mario growing up? <laughs> Matt Duchesne! I think. I, I didn't want to get into Matt Duchesne. Oh, well, who else? I wanted to talk about the Leafs in Vancouver, if we could. Uh, shoot, they might be too young. Maybe Super Mario 64. Might that be. was the Mario they knew. Think about that. I know. Oh my god, we're old. And that was like the updated crazy Mario. We were like, whoa, whoa. we can go 360, what? Or, it's 3D. You know there's a bunch of Leafs on the team like, oh yeah, my older brother played Mario 64. I played Super Mario Sunshine. Like, ah! Oh man. Ah! That's a game I literally never owned. I played it a few times at my friend's house uh, where he actually had a GameCube. Yeah, it was fun. This is a great show so far. <sighs> Leafs lose in uh, Vancouver. Tough loss. Yeah. Now, before we get to anything, before we get to I just Dan want to, Murphy, I just want to talk about how I was right. You were right. I was right. I, I hours, find this hard to believe. Hours before the game, I tweeted this. Oh, great! Levo scores tonight. Book it. Every former Leaf scores their first game back. Don't believe me? Google Peter Holland. And Nick at Nick Barden said, "Adam, can we please make a bet for this?" I know it won't happen, so I'm down to put something on the table. Okay. Eat cat shit. And yeah. Then, <laughs> whoa, I might get my own rage. Eat a pepper no. stuff with cat shit. <laughs> he doesn't have a rage. I know. Sure. That's what the joke is. That's what the joke is. Everybody's so mad at the guy for eating oh, cat shit. Oh, my God. Oh, I worked my entire life to get into this cinder. Inter- really? And all I Your do is eat cat shit. Your life's ambition was to write for free for Dean Blundell's website. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! There's plenty of legitimate things to be mad about! That's not one. No! That's not where you want to work. <laughs> Steve. Yes, Jesse? Would you eat cat shit to write for free for Dean Boy? No! <laughs> no! Here, 
Peter, that question was far too long. <laughs> All right. <laughs> ask it again. How long have you been doing YouTube videos? <laughs> 12 years. No, ask if you could, No, if you could trade... All of those years of YouTube videos and just eat cat shit nope. and then all of a sudden you get to this point of your career, would you eat the cat shit? No. <laughs> no. Other question, would you eat cat shit? No. <laughs> can we have an, uh, you know what, can I ask just an honest question? Like if it saves someone's <laughs> life. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Depends who. I'd really, it literally would. <laughs> I don't know. Do I like them? They borrowed a pen in elementary school and never gave it back. Can I? Well, everyone dies. Like, <laughs> seriously. Can I just say that no one would have faulted the guy if he just didn't eat the cat shit? No! And just <laughs> deleted his tweet that said, I would eat cat shit? Listen. If he just didn't do it, we nobody would be talking yeah, about anything. Yeah, but he did it. <laughs> he, <laughs> he didn't did have do to it. do it. He could have just not done it. He that like, guy oh, was no married <laughs> when he did it and still is. There is someone out there for you. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Adam? I just had the What's the your cat shit related query? I had the visual of him eating it. Oh, it's so gross. Uh, you don't need a visual in your mind, Adam. No. You can watch the video that he posted to the internet. <laughs> no, he deleted it. <laughs> oh, because that means oh, it's no gone. No one saved it. That's the good thing. <laughs> no one will ever find it again. <laughs> That's a good thing about the internet. Once you delete it, it's gone forever. <laughs> I, I saw all these photoshops of me retching over the can, eating a pepper next to cat shit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, people comparing him to dark guy. There's no comparison to dark guy. To any no dark way. guy was a fan who showed up to a game in Washington. In Washington, excited to cheer on his team, who happens to get on the television. <laughs> Catch it, guy. <laughs> Filmed and uploaded himself <laughs> eating cat shit. <laughs> because he made a bet with himself because on the he internet. Made an open <laughs> bet with strangers. <laughs> but it's not even like how many followers did he have before? It's a bet with himself, really. It was the one tweet he sent out to the world I to no know. one, <laughs> to literally no one. I want to know who picked that up and, and pushed it. Because there's like, always one tweet where it's like, yeah. I have five followers, and then I accidentally went viral. Who's the guy that made you go viral? No, Who's he the had first like 1,700 followers. He oh, was he did? one of those like follow back guys. Oh, believe uh, me, I, I was all up on this. Were you in this? Because because I <laughs> I was like, I want to know who this guy is. And Adam, I can't tell you. what I don't know which made me more proud, that he followed me or was from Oshawa. <laughs> <laughs> he could have been down the street eating cash shit from you. I was drunk that night and honestly considered eating somehow shit yourself. contacting no. him and getting him on the LFR. <laughs> you should have done it. And being like, you you should really should have done that. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> His breath is terrible. He's, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets sponsored by Listerine. That's how this Has works. He? No. Oh. But that'd be perfect. I actually think that hey, would be. Hey, did you eat cat shit last night? <laughs> hey, I did, but the Leafs won. Oh, and my. that's why I drink blue Listerine. <laughs> blue Listerine, that's funny. <laughs> I think we just figured it out. This is how you monetize eating cat shit. Can I also just say... <laughs> he didn't understand the business model and, uh, beforehand. He didn't get it. It's okay, but he's a trailblazer. You gotta invest in your future. I think it's a little unfair the way people are making the comparison with him and Dark Eye. Well, there not, isn't one! Yeah! That's, that's what I mean. Like, I, I see it all the time. And the thing about Maz is that he's actually a genuinely nice dude. Um, and, and people were so upset when he got his job at, at uh, TSN Radio. And it's funny because I don't think people understand fully how that works. So um, I don't know if people know this or not, but on certain AM radio stations, you can buy time and put on your own show. And yes. that's what I believe they've done. If I'm wrong on that, I'm, I'm willing there to back off on it. There are some bad radio shows. So you can, you can, you can as long as you buy the time, and then you sell your own commercials. Essentially, it's basically like renting radio. And so I don't know that that's how that works. I, I'm pretty sure that's their setup uh, because I think that's what Todd Shapiro does. Uh, he's also got his sponsors uh. from, from Sirius XM or whatever. And I think because Todd's been out there trolling Leaf fans, um, there, yeah. and, and I think that Dark Guy's getting lumped in with that, mm -hmm. and people just hate them both. And I'm like, listen... Todd Shapiro's pulling a shtick. He's doing the sa exact same thing Walker he's does. Cape yes, yeah. He's cape-baiting everybody. And, and Todd's left the show now. 
He has? Yeah, now, uh, last weekend, I'm pretty sure, was his final episode. They had oh. him on to announce that oh, he'll be doing his own thing, and the, uh, Dark Eye has a new co-host. Oh, so yeah, wait, I heard... what Todd's going to... I don't, I don't know oh. what his next venture is. I don't know where he's moving on to, but well, he's it's, got, he's it's got not, serious, right? It's not uh, Maz and uh, Todd anymore oh, okay. moving forward. Well, the point is... Um, the, he's also kind of good at what he does. Yeah. Dark Eye. <laughs> like, like, listen, well, I, I don't... Okay, here's the thing. Um, I understand that people work hard to get to where they are. Believe me, I've, I, I know how that feels. Um, but I got to do ya. I, I, I got to tell you, like you know, like for instance, the scouting agency. When he was hired by the scouting agency, what were they called? Oh, dude, I NA, don't even NA, know. NA Central Scouting. Yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. thought it was North. He American. got hired by North NHL <laughs> Central Scouting. <laughs> Which he didn't. And what is your breed? Does your range <laughs> block your ability to read? NA Central Scouting is a blog. And people thought it was NHL Central Scouting. And it was like, no, 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 no. no. It's not. Just Google it. Uh, I worked so. <laughs> your life's ambition <laughs> was to work for a blog. Was to work for a. <laughs> Oh my goodness! And so anyway, I just think. Like, and listen, dude, I get it. I've had all those feelings. Me too. I there Me too. was a show. <laughs> I won't say what, and it's all water under the bridge on account of I work for Rogers Sportsnet now. Get your Rogers home phone and whatever. Um, There was a show on at night when I was an intern Mm -hmm. that was so bad. And I'd be working there for free Mm -hmm. and thinking about how I'm going to afford my next month's go train fare. And, you know, the industry is shrinking. Everyone's getting laid off. And I'm listening to this shit heap of a show <laughs> yeah the thing was sponsored kept the lights on in an industry that was shrinking every day so what are you gonna do you, you gonna get rid of that show that's sponsored that's that's a night show yeah but i was too young and upset to understand that oh yeah listen you you can be young and upset like i've i've had it happen where people get promoted over me and uh i remember when i was holding upset Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been I've been in contract negotiations that have gone south. I've gone I've lost jobs here, there, and everywhere. The fact is, it happens. Um, but I, I I feel like it's a little unfair. Getting back to the point here, yeah, sorry. That that dark guy who is I who we've talked to, we've met, yeah. um, is is being shit on like this. I I don't think it's fair. Um, you can you can disagree with his opinions. Don't you don't have to like how I, I'm. This is no. This is going from cat shit guy because everyone's <laughs> oh, right. like cat shit guy and dark guy. Same thing. They're not, not the same. Not no. the same. And, not even close. And dark guy has turned this into. By the way, dark guy's been around for like two years now, guys. Like this is not. Yeah. He's not. Almost two full years. And there's people that follow him that really like him. And I think that you mm-hmm. need to... He doesn't have to be for you. Don't yuck <laughs> someone's yum. Oh, wow. Just it's so let him crazy enjoy it. that people can just, like, enjoy what they enjoy and other people don't have to shit on it. Like, it's a weird concept. It's hard. <laughs> I don't get it, therefore bad. And therefore, it's bad for everyone. Like, you know, no. Yeah, I so know. that's, I mean, that's just all I want to say. I don't I know feel, why this is our flag that we're planting today, but we're planting it. I'm planting it. I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Seen enough. There's that's that. <laughs> that that With that's the that blind again. dark guy. Hey, that's that. <laughs> is this your contract length? That you? Is this the hill that you would die on? No, I don't think this is the hill I would die on. But I believe in what we're saying. That's that with I dark guy and the I, other guy. Cat's cat. I think in life Sorry. you always Doing benefit like more. <laughs> In life, you benefit more by celebrating others' success. I believe yeah. success comes to you when you celebrate the success of others, even when it fucking sucks and you're so mad and you want to do exactly what they're doing. Keep your head in your own boat. Fuck yeah, man. Like, it's like the, the Kylie Jenner stuff that broke this year. She was the first quote-unquote self-made billionaire They literally just the world. repeated the story from last year. No, but it became official. Like, she passed the oh, number. She actually made a billion. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, and and people are like, year. well, you know, Piers Morgan's spouting off in England about how she's famous off her sister's sex tape. Listen, there are rich kids everywhere. Not all of them become billionaires. <laughs> you got to respect the hustle a little mm-hmm. bit. It's weird. I know Piers Morgan's an asshole. I just can't tell which kind. I can't either. I don't know what he stands for. <laughs> right? I don't know where. Where are you? Anyway, I, I just, I feel like, listen, let's celebrate the good things. Let's celebrate the fact that Rachel and Ian are coming out with a podcast. Let's celebrate that. Support good stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's, yeah, listen, support what you want to support. If you love it, support it. Otherwise, saw, leave it alone. So I go found me for something yesterday. I was like, I want to support that. I support it. What was it? It was, um, oh, I forget the exact name of it. I think it's just called Black Girl Hockey. 
Oh, okay. And it's a, they want to become a not-for-profit organization. And I was like, you know what? Here you go. I saw Love a uh, I GoFundMe for edible cat shit. And I was like, here's $5. <laughs> now, what would the cost of that be? Just one cat? No, no, no. They're trying to... Uh, or, like build an industry. Oh, edible ca- so like catch it that won't like give yeah. you talks. They're trying whatever to get into, it's called. I saw they're trying to get into shoppers. Is their first <laughs> like that's where they want to be first because it's like ah, uh, it's not really food, but like it could be like medicine if you really need cat shit. So they're trying to get into shoppers. Uh, so I, 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 shoppers, I, I sent them five dollars. Because I'm like, I support this. There's something genuinely wrong. Eat some with cat you. shit if you want. If you want to eat cat shit, let's celebrate it. Oh fuck, man. I don't I don't know. Like but... <laughs> Yeah, go find me Black Girl Hockey Club. <laughs> can you can you send me that? That's I would really like to cool. support yeah, that you too. Said that, yeah. yeah, just at Tweet Black Girl out. Hockey. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um Leafs <laughs> I somehow we <laughs> trying to abruptly <laughs> Slam the <laughs> brakes on that one, Tokyo Drift. What did you want? Uh, Leafs lost? Leafs uh, lost against uh, uh, Vancouver. We had a bet. Me and Nick Barden. Oh, right. Yeah. That's what we're starting at. I don't know how we got here. Nick, who, by the way, will now be writing for the Dean Blundell blog. <laughs> because That's he made a bet on the internet. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and let's go on another rant that'll last 10 minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, no, okay. Okay, related, though. All the negativity. <laughs> trust me, trust me. The negativity. We are going to get out of here with his friend. The negativity can be directly linked to the least losing. I would agree with that. People get mad. They do. There it is. And they don't know where else to take it out. So here we go. Nick said, hey, Adam, I said again, I'm going to read this tweet again. Levo scores tonight. Book it. Every former league player scores their first game back. Don't believe me. Google Peter Holland. And if people, other people had examples. John Michael Lyles being one, another one of them. Oh, the, fuck the famous a fuck duck. a duck episode. Nick Barton said, Adam, can we please make a bet for this? I know it won't happen. So I'm down to put anything on the table or something on the table. I'm like, what did you have in mind? And I put in brackets. Keep in mind, I won't be, a, be awake, but that's okay. I'll still keep my side because obviously I had to go to sleep and the game started at 9 and I go to bed at 8. He didn't score until like 10.30 at night. <laughs> mm-hmm. He said, I want to say if Levo doesn't score, then you have to eat a hot pepper on the podcast or make a video doing it and us fans get to choose which pepper it is by a poll. And I was thinking, you choose what I have to do if I lose. So, Nick lost because mm-hmm. Levo did score. Yeah. Because I knew it. I could feel it in my bones. You know when you're like, nah, the Leafs have been doing too well. From Something Levo's... stupid and shitty that has to happen, so we have something to talk about. Adam was Fifi Dobson. He could feel it in his bones. Oh, Wasn't that, that Tegan and Sarah and DJ T? No, oh, maybe I could. Nah, right. not Fifi Damn Dobson. Damn it. No, but like both <laughs> at the DJ. same time. Current sorta. DJ. Um, <laughs> so, anyway... Um, from Levo's first shift, I was like, he's getting one tonight. Yeah. He was putting every piece of garbage on net because he just wanted to bury against the Leafs. And God, he's got a shot. Leafs gave him way too much room. That's how oh, he yeah. scored. He's yeah. got a great shot. The, his problem with the Leafs is he can never get get open enough. So what do we do to Nick? Let's, I don't know. We don't have to get too over-the-top creative because he wanted you to suffer through a hot pepper. I think it's your turn there. Nick? Nick Barton? <laughs> Barton. Barton. Barton? <laughs> Nick, Nick, Bard, Barton down the hatches for that hot pepper there, Nick. Can he be know. hot pepper guy? <laughs> hot pepper guy. Okay, your job is to get a really, like a ghost pepper or something, uh-huh. and you got to reenact the catch it guy video <laughs> to a T. <laughs> yeah, do that. All right, Nick. That's your challenge. You have to reenact Except- the catch it guy video. <laughs> Hmm. But not too hot. Don't get crazy. He Those only did are... the chomp, chomp, swallow with water. If he does that with this pepper, he might, he <laughs> might die. Get an ulcer. Can I yeah. vote that we make Nick do nothing? Whoa! And instead, we donate to charity. <sighs> yeah, I mean, yes, but <laughs> damn it, man! I hate you. you Why would you do that? I Why think would this you do is, that? I think you guys are bullying. Oh, really? I think... Jesse Blake, we're bullying. I think this is a. Oh, is Tavares a... Statios, really stupid. This is a helpless oh, okay. fan. All right, all right. This is a fan <laughs> who's just a listener to our show. Clearly loves Adam, likes to interact with the show. Great listener, and we're gonna go and make him eat a pepper. That's so rude. He challenged me. Yeah, but sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes people say, I'm going to eat cat shit if the Leafs lose. <laughs> or at least win. And then and I'm going to write for a they blog. They live up to it. They write for Team <laughs> One now. Maybe we should help this guy. 
by <laughs> what timeline not... are we living in right now that this is a thing? <laughs> Maybe we help this individual. What's his name? Uh, Nick Barton. Maybe we help Nick uh -huh. by not making him live up to his bet. Because if he does it, he might end up writing for Dean Blundell for free. <laughs> so make him write for us. <laughs> what so do we instead... have? We don't have a blog. Not yet. I got a Tumblr. Let's make a Tumblr. Instead of making <laughs> him do something. That. No, they don't. I know, not Instead really. of turning Nick into whatever guy, into I did something crazy guy, we let him go about his life. And wow. we say, thanks for playing, Nick. I'm sorry you lost. Adam is the bigger man and will do nothing about your loss. <laughs> I'll no, combine I'm not, the two. Except congratulate you. I'm, <laughs> His punishment is he has to make the donation. You got to donate $5,000 to charity <laughs> because you lost. <laughs> Financial ruin is the consequence. <laughs> donate or are you a bad person? <laughs> How dare you, Nick? You have to sell your house. You have to sell your house. <laughs> and if you don't do it, you're a piece of shit. Oh my god. Wow. Are you okay? No. Yeah, I got, <laughs> That's a no. I got jacked up off that burrito. I had. Um, <laughs> donation to the Martin Jar. Yeah, Nick. All of us. Donation to and the Martin Nick. Yeah. All of us and Nick. How much? 20 bucks. Okay. You Can go. you also tweet out that link? TheMarnerJar.com? That, no, that not that one. The the other one, the, the one you mentioned earlier. The Hockey Club. Oh, yes, I will. Please tweet that out. Yes, I will. Um, yeah, so of course, you know, Josh Levo's got a score. We saw the 5-9-4th line uh, for uh, the first time. Patan, uh, 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 Ennis. And more. And more. And... And we, it, and we won't be seeing that anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Hey. Now, I talked to uh, Ian Tullock about that last night. And I said, dude, like, what do you think? Like, was it, was it worth trying? Yes. Are they, were they terrible? And he said they had a couple strong shifts. They drew a penalty on one. They did. There was another where they created some offense before an icing. I can't wait for him and Rachel to do this podcast together. Which led to a goal when Van's fourth line was exhausted. He said they also got hemmed in in their D zone once or twice. And they did get, he said they, they struggled five on five. They got outshot and outchanced. Uh, he said, but it is one line. And this is like six minutes of ice time together. Six minutes on the road, one game, their first game. Patan's second is a leaf. Like, I, I, is this not just so gloriously Babcock? Yeah. To try something begrudgingly that he didn't even want to try in the first place for five minutes, set it up to fail, watch it fail, and go see, I knew. Like, my only criticism is why after the NS hat trick? Like, you didn't, you could have done it. Any other time. You, you could have gone, hey, hey, you know what? We got this guy. We want to see what this guy has. How about next game we give Goat, we, we leave Goat in his role because, I don't know, they just scored a hat trick. I know at least two of the goals were bullshit, but who cares? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's ridiculous Well, here's to me. what Mike Babcock had to say with that line. He said, I couldn't use it as much in the Z D zone. You know what I mean? Everybody loves players. That's great. But you've got to be able to use lines and everyone's got to have a role and somebody's got to penalty kill and somebody's got to be able to take face-offs. So I didn't think it gave our team with that lineup as good an opportunity as I might have wanted. Fine. Well, and I asked Ian about Goche because I was like, so is Goche some like monster in the defensive zone when it comes to face-offs? And apparently not really. No, there was a play recently... And I think it was Goat. He basically took the face off and then got off the ice, and they threw Kapanen out there. Ever since the Lindholm trade, I don't think Babcock's been totally satisfied with the personnel he has on the PK, which is confusing to me because, like, the Leafs organization has like really put a lot of effort into developing all their Marlies into penalty killers. And off the top of my head, Marner is unbelievable, and he can take some face-offs. Kapanen, Hyman, he can take some face-offs, and Brown. Uh, Janssen, I know Tavares has been used sparingly. I don't know, what's the problem, Mike? What's the issue? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand that. Um, and I. I, I mean, I, I, we are focusing on this. Literally, the, the the line that makes the least impact in the Leafs lineup, right? Like, yeah. it's it's of the four. It's not great. It doesn't matter. Um, it's Caudry's, very leafy to Caudry's focus out, on this. out. Gardner's out. Dermot's out. That might be more of the issue. And here's the here's the issue that I have. Frederick Anderson's probably got six or seven starts left. That's it. 
Uh, Babcock oh, indicated more than that. Babcock indicated to, and this is from Mark Masters, in, indicated that the target for Anderson is 56 starts. That was before Vancouver's game, which means he's played 49. There are 60. There were there's 15 games left, three back to back. So. The Leafs may rest their number one goalie a bit down the stretch. Anderson played 66 last season and had an up and down playoff series, 896 save percentage. So that means we probably will see a Freddie Anderson probably six, seven more times, max. Oh boy. And, well, well, and that's not an oh boy. Like if you look at where the Leafs are, like uh, let's have a look at the standings. What are they, oh, 87 points? It has it has nothing to do with the standings it, and it more to do with my overall ability to enjoy games. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sucks when go- listen, and I'm part of this, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take blame for it for discussing it. But I feel like things still need to be discussed. I don't shit post Garrett Sparks. <laughs> I haven't seen. Oh, Justin. I haven't seen. Well, Justin is <laughs> Justin's obviously joking, but no. Well, he's, maybe, know, maybe he's not. not. Maybe he's not. But uh, <laughs> the Leafs are literally five wins away from like clinching a playoff spot, right? Uh, something like That'll that. That'll give them 10 points. 87, 97 points is going to be... Oh, they're at 87? They're at 87 yeah, right now. Five so, would give them a spot. So, yeah. so you need five Probably. wins in 16 games. I think they can manage. Now, I beyond so. that, I don't really give a shit where they finish, as long as they finish in the playoffs. Oh, the third in the Atlantic behind Boston. Right. Boston, did you see the ridiculous bullshit they pulled off last night? I know. I know. Florida, have some pride. My I know. lord. Crazy, oh. right? So they tied it up with 36 <clears throat> seconds left and lost with time to spare in regulation. Oh my God, the Panthers, man! Um, you know, I, I think with with what I'm looking at in the standings, we got 67 games, 87 points. Maybe this is the thing that we've been screaming for all season, which oh, is yeah. specifically you when we talk on this show, anyway. Which is. What? Let the guy play, as in Garrett Sparks. Let him play. Let him find his game. Let him find his confidence. If 56 games is the cutoff for Frederick Anderson, then I play basically Garrett Sparks two games and Freddie one. Garrett Sparks two games, Freddie one Something for the rest like of the that. season. That's what I would do. Well, and they have uh, back-to-back back-to-backs coming up. Ooh. So I imagine that was going to be Freddie Sparks, Freddie Sparks anyway. Mm-hmm. And what Rachel said, too, which is you pick the game that you have the best chance to win, and that's where you put your starter in. Right? You know, Just for the points. I don't the know if points. that's always the first one, though. Because what if you're playing Tampa the first night? Well, that's what I mean. That's what I think you would do. You would adjust accordingly. So, like, say you're I playing... I don't think they would. <laughs> with no offense to the Senators here, but we know where they are. So, let's say you're playing Tampa one night and the Senators the next. Maybe you start Freddie against the Senators. I agree. I would agree there. And I'd like to see Garrett Sparks play more because Freddie Anderson has been injured. He was just injured a month and a half ago. And and he took a, took a whack to the face. Yeah, like Vancouver this guy game. needs to play. And so I want to see, and I think the Leafs want to see, yeah. what he actually is. And to be fair to him, while I keep saying I haven't seen NHL goaltending from him yet, I still, don't, I still haven't seen Not it yet. Consistent. In my own eyes, it's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Uh, but I don't think he's consistently played enough to be able to show that anyway. No, I, I will give I, you that. He's just such a squirrely goalie. Like I wish he would calm down. Like he he is consistently what Freddie is when Freddie's bad. Mm-hmm. Like you know Oct- Oct- October Freddie, which is no longer a thing. But he was all over the damn play. Stay in your net. Doesn't it? Doesn't it look like none of Garrett Sparks' equipment fits? <laughs> I never looked at it that way. But yeah, I can see what you're saying. Gloves and always twist in a funny way, and is yeah. No, there are there are times when too he's like diving when he doesn't need to dive. Like, what are you diving for? Just 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 slide facing the wrong way in the butterfly. Like, how did you even pull that off? Like, I know. Not that I'm a goalie coach or anything, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. I've watched a few games. I've listen. I don't know anything about cars, but I know fire's bad. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. I see a car on fire. I, I can like diagnose that. that pretty quick. Bad. <laughs> it's not good. Officer, you shouldn't bad. be doing that. <laughs> um, but we did, uh, the Leafs did um, re-up Garrett Sparks for next season on a deal that I think is really great. 750 grand. It's not even worth complaining about. Well, people complain anyway, but it was so yeah. funny that like that's a buryable contract. Not a, If you want to bury that deal, you put him on waivers, and if he doesn't get claimed, then he's in the minors, and it doesn't he could, matter. He could easily just be the third goalie next year. Yeah. And like, it makes no difference to the Leafs. It, or it would maybe be a he zero, proves it. 
zero dollar cap hit, mm-hmm. and yeah, maybe he proves it, and then he's a great bargain. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, I mean, the whole reason they got rid of McElhaney wasn't to try Sparks for sixteen games. I think it was all right. Let's take a run at this for at least a couple years. Um, but yeah, it cost them zero dollars against the cap. And if the Leafs want to pay their AHL starter seven hundred and fifty grand, what's it to you? They were. They're paying Hutchinson over a million bucks to do it this year. They paid Pickard a million bucks to be the Marlies' backup last year. What's it to you? Who doesn't cares? matter. Yeah, does doesn't not matter. How many ten million dollars does Frederick Anderson get when his contract expires? Uh, I'm not stoked about that. I don't want to. I don't want to really. I mean, that's a li- little bit <laughs> for, far off. I think we need to work. It's two years. Eh, no, two this, years after this one. This season's over, mm-hmm. and then two more years, and then next season, and the year after, he's a UFA. No, you're such a least five fan. year. Worry about it when it happens. Five year contract. Yeah, so this is year three. This year's this year's done. Yeah. Oh, okay. Done. Oh, okay. So then next year he plays. Then he the plays. He plays. Then he he's plays a no, he plays next year. Uh-huh. Le- Leafs and then after for four next more year, no, that's not it. No, no, after next year he's going, and then he finishes the next year. He's going into that off season as a UFA. Yeah. So all that year is UFA year. Yeah. Is that's when you can resign him. So he gets ten million. And guess what? That's what. He's not wrong. That's when you let him walk. Ten million bucks. That's thirty-two. Tough. Still young. Nope. No. Nope. No. No. The Leafs won't resign Freddie eight, Anderson. Eight million. The Leafs will not resign Freddie Anderson. Oh, seven million. Okay. The cap's going to be like a hundred and twenty gazillion. One hundred twenty billion by then. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so I say they do it. Nah. <laughs> no, I don't. You don't think, think so. You don't think the Frederick Anderson's the Leaf after this contract? No, I think he'll make so much money. It. it I have it, no idea. I don't think so. I have no idea. I haven't wow. given it a thought. It's too far in the future for me, a mere fan. Do we start the Freddy jar? To consider it. It's fine. Here. Right no, there. let's not start the Freddy jar. Right there. there it is. Um, but yeah, listen, if, Freddy if bottle. I want to see what Garrett Sparks has in these last few games. We've got, it's 67 games left, so that's, what, 15 games? Yes. Yes, actually. So I want to see what he's got. I want to see this guy play. No. No. And if they lose games <laughs> that they shouldn't lose, then that's good. Fine. Maybe they could learn to play a little defense around poor Garrett. Or score some goals for poor Garrett. Yeah. The goal they, support hasn't been there when he's I lost. I want to say That's more true. than half of their games, they've scored a goal or less. And it's always because it's the second half of a back-to-back, and they're pooped, man. But all the same, and the Islanders. score goals. Um, <laughs> Mac Hollowell, who's been quietly amazing in the OHL. Now, he's an overager. Yeah. However... There are there are good overagers and then there are great overagers. And Sean Dersey th- was an overager. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he was and he's a, Le- a Los Angeles King now. He was a key part of that trade. Uh, Mac Hollowell seems like they may have found a, a really good third third round pick. Absolutely. We, yeah, a lot of people have been high on him since the draft. And it's interesting because when they did draft him, people were like, "Who the hell is this guy?" Sue Greyhound, sir. Sue Greyhound. That was the one thing about. This past draft, it made me nervous. I was just like, oh, God. Dubas is just another hockey guy. Oh, crap. And uh, have you seen some of the Sandine highlights? It's insane. With the Marley. Yeah. He's good, eh? Yeah. I'm real happy what, for What him. blows me away about Sandine is that anybody that goes and sees him, like the average normal fan, like TJ from our, our morning show went and saw, and he's like, listen, he's like, I, I, he's like, I, I'm a, a hockey fan, so I'm not an expert. Mm-hmm. But... One thing I did notice is he always makes the smart play. Sandine. He's never hanging himself out to dry. And now, he plays bigger than his size, too. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, the, I mean, now, I haven't seen him play. I haven't been to a Marley's game this year, uh, to my detriment. But I think that he is a guy that, I bet, man, he challenges in, in camp next year. And I Sandine. mean, if, Yeah, and if, if to Kyle Dubas was saying Lilligren, they were hoping he would challenge by the end of the year, then he's for sure going to be there in camp. For sure. I, I wonder, if, like I said it before, I wonder if their defense problem sort of solves itself. If Rosen's still hurt and Borgman's still hurt. Who they also re-signed. Borgman yep. re-signed too. And he's a project worth holding on to. And Marincin just gets torched in game one by the Bruins, which is not hard to imagine. I'd try it. Why not? I'd try it this year. 18-year-old Rasmus Sandin, I'm serious. Against the Listen, Boston Bruins? I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I just think it might be the best available uh, option. I wouldn't. No? I would, no, that's the whole point, is you yeah. don't do that. <laughs> don't Oilers your prospects, man. <sighs> but the playoffs. No, different. dude. You let them go through the Marlies. You let the Marlies do the playoffs uh, as the Marlies. Fine. 
Man, a few guys down there are tearing it up. Did you see Sandine's overtime winner? Yes. And the Bracco? Yes. <laughs> Bracco made the entire team fall down at once. I've never seen that before. You know, it's funny watching Jeremy Bracco and, and maybe like a guy who follows them more close, like Heart of Lad or, or Scott Wheeler or whatever, would disagree with me. I wonder, you know, I've, I've seen things written about Kasperi Kapanen and then that contract that he's going to have. Oh, don't you dare. And I, no, listen, oh. my, my, I love Kasperi Kapanen. I love Andreas Janssen. I am not sure how they're going to fit them all. I just don't know. Oh, they might either. be able to do it, but I don't know how. Me neither, yeah. Um, and I hope they can do it, but if they can't, Jeremy Bracco sure makes that a little bit easier to swallow. Yeah, that's... Same with Trevor Moore. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't think it's a good idea at all to trade Jeremy Bracco because in a pinch, if you end up trading some of those expensive guys, like that guy... I would not be opposed to him even running, running, not on, running the Leafs' second power play. He's I, that I kind of he, mind, eh? He's brilliant offensively. The problem is, like, he's, you know how they talk about how the Leafs are small and they're children? No, he's like, yeah, no, for real. He's an <laughs> actual child. <laughs> he, I, so the first time I saw him, granted this was a few years ago, mm-hmm. it was during the Marlies um, uh, playoff run in 2016. And that's when they had like three teams worth of players. It was yes. absurd. Uh, and Jeremy Bracco walked by and I was like, oh, they let the school kids in. And I thought he was a school kid. And I go, oh, that's Jeremy Bracco. That's why I recognize him. I don't it's know like, any. It's like the Johnny Goudreau at Calgary camp treatment, right? Yes. Where they Except... thought he's like, oh, excuse me, Mr. Intern. I'm pretty sure he's smaller than Goudreau, though. Probably. He's tiny, man. He's a tiny guy, but he's a monster. Yeah. Sasky said that when uh, she was working for the Leafs, and uh, Sasky Stewart, that is, and like you oh, know, he was, sorry, good. I was wondering was, what Sasky. Yeah, that's the only Sasky about. that we know. Yeah. Um, she said that he was just a beauty. She's like, he just is one of those guys. He's full of personality. She's like, you know, probably some maturing to do, but she she really was. She thought he was quite the character and and quite fun. Yeah, YouTube Jeremy Bracco mic'd up. Uh, I was there when Sportsnet shot that. He's priceless. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Really is, confident uh, guy. I wonder if he's a guy that the like Leaf fans kind of glob onto. Like, I love this dude. They will. Yeah. They will, for sure. Is Zach Hyman at 2.25 too much? No. I don't think no. so. I think... And, uh, sorry, go ahead. Go, no, you Just go. to fit you in go the roster. Go sorry, I'm yeah. groaning not because of you. I'm groaning because... Like, what? what is everyone's obsession with picking on the guy? Like, how many shifts do you see because him doing the, the wrong cap. thing? Yeah, it's you need it. He's this, fine. Is there going to be enough room for Zach Hyman? Is that the guy you move out to make room for everybody? Is there enough? Like, okay, I was sort of on this train with like Bozak. Like, oh, he's making too much money, and mm-hmm. no, okay, but they made him the first line center. They like at some point you ought to be paid for the work you put in. And sure. Zach Hyman is on the penalty kill. He plays 18 minutes a night. He plays on the top line. Yeah. But he's, is that not worth at least 2.25? But he he's on the first line for a role, not yeah. necessarily for that's where he's placed. And is it the first line? Is available as Matthew's line just by default the first line? Because he's not playing like a first liner. No, but I mean, he's he might put up 20 goals. He seems, sure. at this rate, you could say confidently he's good for like 15-ish. Mm-hmm. Like as a free agent, is that not a $2 million player at least? I don't think he's the problem. Like, But if, is he the problem because you need more room? No, the guy you move is Connor Brown, who has nearly an identical contract. Yeah. And bless the guy, but like, he's just... Zach Hyman has made himself more indispensable, or less dispensable, uh, to the Leafs than Connor Brown has. So that, to me, is the contract you move. What about both of them? You could, I suppose. <laughs> I just don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Necessarily. Yeah. I don't... I mean, it could be a good idea. There's just... I just don't see the urgency for it. Hmm. There's so many other issues I would tackle before Hyman. Brown, you're paying over $2 million to, and he like doesn't even have a definitive role. And if you do give him one on a perfectly healthy roster, it's probably as a fourth-line player. Patrick Marlowe makes entirely too much money. Nikita Zaitsev makes entirely too much money for too long. Like, those are all situations I would tackle long before I would trade Zach Hyman. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, and, and that will be very interesting to see how they tackle, especially the Nikita Zaitsev situation. But I imagine that 
you know, I don't think Jake Gardner is going to be a leave next year. I don't think that Nikita Zaitsev will be. Oh, I you've moved off Jake Gardner. No, I mean, listen, I would love to see them resign him. Yeah. I'm just, like, it, it being realistic, if you want to hang on, like, do you hang on to Jake Gardner at $5 million if you can get him for that, which mm-hmm. I don't think you can, even though, like, free agency, like, you might be able to offer him, like, eight years at $5 million bucks, and he might take it, but then... You know, to me, it makes a lot more sense to hold on to guys like Kapanen and Janssen, who are 22, 23 years old, uh, will hit their peak in four years. We still don't know what they could fully be yet, and they've been great. Um, you know, you've got a healthy Jake Muzzin. You've got um, oh, a Travis goodness. Dermott. Yeah, Jake, Jake Muzzin without the cracked rib or whatever he's got going on. Yeah, uh, um, I don't know if the Leafs social person got in trouble for that. But yeah, he had, he had that big wrap around him. Yeah, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, in the Leafs Instagram story, they uh, it was before the Vancouver game, all the Leafs are playing keep-up soccer or whatever, and Muzzin is participating, and he looks like he's having fun, but he's wrapped with something. So he's either it was either like a heat pad for his back, or it's something for like cracked ribs. Hmm. Well, I assume he wouldn't be playing soccer if he had cracked ribs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think you're doing keep ups. Maybe it's a back rib. thing. Maybe it's just sore muscles. Thing, yeah. or I don't also, know. like I know they need guys right now, but if he was actually hurt, they wouldn't be playing him. Yeah, yeah. Like no. and by actually, the I mean like debilitatingly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's fine. Yeah, he's I don't probably think it's fine. That serious. But but all the same, his bad games. I think it's it's a bit of an explanation. If you've got and then you got you don't have Ron Hainsey either, so you've got. Jake's four million, four and a half million coming off. You've got Ron Hainsey's three million. You've got Connor Brown's two million, and in a perfect world, Nikita Zaitsev's four million as well. There's your, there's your money. There's the money that you need. I think Kyle's going to have a lot of fun this summer. You think he'll enjoy this? Because I think you will. Yeah, I no, think th- we got to stop panicking about this. What did GMs do all day? He's had a busy week. the The second, um, I don't think it was March first, but it was. There's some sort of deadline where you're allowed to sign contracts of certain players. I can't remember what it was. And he signed Sparks, Mm -hmm. um, Borgman, Hollowell, and I want to say those were all consecutive days. Who's he going to sign today? I don't know. Let's let's check the Leafs PR right now. Nothing's happened yet. Nothing that you know of. Something's going to happen. I'm positive of it. Someone's going to get signed today. During the show, I have a good feeling. It's happening. Anyway, tough loss against Vancouver, Mm -hmm. but things happen. Andrew Walker was in his element. <laughs> oh my god! Absolutely, he, when in he his tweeted element. out the Matthews jacket with the L. Oh, on Oh yeah. <laughs> so I was skating at Nathan Phillips Square before the show, and there was a guy on the ice wearing that jacket. Really? The exact same jacket. See, it sells jackets. There you go. It sells that, jackets. I cannot believe that that jacket exists beyond the one that he had. I didn't even see what brand it was. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It was for a men's magazine in Canada, right? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, all anyway. I know is he looked like a Pokemon boss. <laughs> he, he sure did. Um, all looks right, like Giovanni. So, so the Leafs, I, I think it's ninety percent now. They're going to play the Bruins, and so James Myrtle made a really good point, and I think he's right in in his latest article because of the playoff format. And granted, we're Toronto fans, so for us, this is a little bit frustrating because it's the same thing every year. It's bad for the Bruins. How good do they have to be? They shouldn't have to play a team as good as the Leafs. And then a team as good as Tampa. Right. Right. Exactly right. It rewards you for being mediocre if you're a wild card. And also it punishes Tampa. You're having the yeah, best season in like 20 years, and you got to take on either Toronto or Boston in the second round? That's bullshit. Yeah. It's a trash format. It's So to all three of those top Atlantic teams, it's bad. Yeah. So... Um, I don't think Boston fans are freaking out about it the same way Leaf fans are. And I understand why. They, they've beaten us in seventh game two times. And I get also it. haven't lost an NHL game since January. That's insane. In regulation. Anyway. Absolutely insane. What a yeah, crazy regulation. run. Yeah. Um, but I think Boston teams just go on runs like that. Like, oh, I where feel they like, win? Like, the city of Boston just doesn't know what losing feels like anymore. They did for about 100 years with mm-hmm. the Red Sox. But then all of a sudden, uh, Patriots, ha- oh, Drew Bledsoe went down and some guy, some skinny guy named Tom Brady's got to take over. Oh, they win the Super Bowl. Tom Brady, body like and a bag of milk in what that is it? photo. It's Two- unbelievable. 2004, they broke the, you know, it was the Kurt Schilling yeah. and, and they traded no- Nomar Garcia Parra. Was it 2003 or four? I think that it was, was four. Uh, that was 3-0 down to the Yankees, come back and win it. right. Yeah. 
greatest baseball oh, playoff series ever. That ever was a time. That was ever. amazing. Yeah. That ever. really was. Yeah. Um, and then, well, you and know, who wasn't cheering for the Red Sox? Besides oh, oh, yeah, hundred percent. They were the like, lovable Red Sox. A hundred percent. They hadn't won in a hundred and whatever years. And now it's like, ah, uh, shut up, <laughs> <laughs> blow it out your ass, lovable uh, Red Sox. Yeah, exactly. You're both just rich teams. <laughs> the, um, it's the Yankees versus the Red Yankees. Sorry. Oh, I don't think the Rod's Red Sox would appreciate that. The Red Yankees, you heard me. Wow. Um, no. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, either. like, like they deserve they deserve that confidence because as a city, they've mm-hmm. had a lot of championships. Their teams have devoted themselves to winning, and here they are. Um, I thought Brad Marchand's troll job uh, on the NHLPR Twitter account was hilarious. Yep. I think a round of applause for that. Because, yep. hey, how about that? It's a personality. In the games, and then he had to backtrack it because it's hockey. No way, did he? And they won't let him say it. Have any fun? Here's what he originally said. Yeah, he said, "I can't." uh, It was Mitch Marner. It was uh, Mitch Marner became the eighth player in Leafs history to to uh, get. Uh, to require 66 games or fewer to reach the 80-point mark. Brad Marchand responds, Can't wait to see this kid's new deal. 12 million AAV? It better be. Hashtag Marner Watch. And then Steve's the first reply under it. It's like, ah, 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 MarnerJar.com. And that, I thought, was funny. And I did receive a $12 donation from someone who put Brad Marchand as their name. I highly doubt Brad Marchand <laughs> donated twelve dollars <laughs> to the Marner Jar. I think it might have been some jokester. Yeah. When they asked him about the tweet in the locker room, he had to say some people really took that the wrong way. I mean, give the kid credit; he's a great player. That's all I was trying to get at. He's having a great year because we can't have fun in NHL land. You know, Brad didn't have to back <laughs> off that. He could have just been like, "Yeah, I'm just fucking with him." Yeah. <laughs> Like he should have yeah, doubled down on it. Yeah. Why didn't he? Did it was you hilarious. like the part where I said exactly half a million more than Matthews? <laughs> yeah, because it's funny. It was really funny. That's the point. Yeah. You think Brad Marchand doesn't read what uh, Mitch Marner's dad and Mitch Marner's agent say in the press? Oh, they're up to date. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Are you t- kind of a small business? Follow hockey. That's why all the players who are like, "Yeah, I don't watch the playoffs." I'm like, "You're a liar." You're I can see liars. not wanting. I can see being sour enough not to want want to watch the playoffs. I could see that. Yeah. Never not one game in two months. I think I you think would they're be all liars. I think you would be you wouldn't want to watch the games. Maybe you watch the highlights, you pay attention. Yeah. And I think you watch the player movement, the gossip, all that stuff, the tweets. I can see not wanting to watch the game. You can not watch the game, but you're at home watching film of your game from the season. Yeah. Yeah, but like you wouldn't want to see what the best teams are doing. You wouldn't no. want to see what the teams that are better than yours are doing. Not necessarily. You it might to. stick in your cross so badly yeah. that you don't want to. You don't want to hear about it. Yeah. I don't know. Listen, it's their free time. They can do whatever they want with it. I just wouldn't. You want to see what Tampa's doing? You like you don't want to watch Tampa Boston. If that's what it comes to be, um, why am I already planning ahead like Boston's going to win? Listen, I hate I, my Leafs brain. I, who, are you, yeah. who are you picking in a Leafs Boston series? Fuck me. Who are you picking? Shut up. I'm picking, <laughs> well, I'm picking the Leafs. I'm a fan. I want the Leafs to win, but who are you picking? <laughs> uh, odds, <laughs> odds, and logic. Shut up. You Listen, know, I want the Leafs to beat Boston. <laughs> But I gotta admit, if they do, I'll be a little bit surprised. <laughs> which, will, which is gonna contribute to the fun! Out of my I'm gonna it. retweet Steve's answer. I got it. I broke him. You broke him. <laughs> you broke him. You made Steve say it. You know? And it's funny because, but like, the Leafs. Damn! Friggin' Bruins! <laughs> This lousy, <laughs> shitty hockey team. I'm sick of them. <laughs> Sucks. What? You know what? You know what the worst part of this is going to be? What? It's, it's not even going to be when they lose. <laughs> oh, you got you have something else? Sorry, go ahead. It'll be that. It it will be that the Leafs need to acquire toughness. For the next season, that's what it'll be. The, oh, the, hockey talk! Oh, this season's gonna be hockey insufferable? talk! After if if there's a first round loss, it's gonna be so a bunch, painful. To a bunch of guys to. known for toughness are gonna say that they need toughness. You don't say. <laughs> like, oh, a bunch of tough guys who need to continue to work because they didn't make enough money during their careers. For God's sake, hire Rachel, man. New perspective or some shit. Well, and this is this is the thing. I I. I totally get why people feel that way, but when you look at when you look at how the Leafs have done this year, okay, season ends and let's say it ends exact, freeze the standings, it's fast going forward to. to 82 we games. We don't even need to present. No. It's going to. It end, no, but like say every team ends where they are right now. Sure. Columbus misses by a point. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Columbus. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs have had a fucking phenomenal season. They might have the best season and, they've literally ever had. They might. 
Eclipse 105 points, and Freddy is going to break the goaltending wins record. And fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you losing like, four or seven. Like, if like, you look at the league... Jesus. The Leafs are in fifth place. By a point. Yeah. And if they won against Vancouver, they'd be tied for fourth. And that's... This is what I mean. Like, <laughs> if you're finishing top five in the league, you're pretty fucking good. And I... And, and three of those those two other teams in the, in the top five? Tampa, Boston. And, and I, I just think, like, we have got to temper our expectations a little bit here. Uh, and temper our... our, our um, I think we got to look at this realistically. Hmm. It is going to be a really tough slug against the Boston Bruins. Are, am I wrong? They're going to be a tough play. If So if they lose, <laughs> D- Kyle Dubas isn't going to lose his head and all of a sudden start listening no. to what Brian Burke says. No. However, can, tr- can we just agree to go, let's, take, let's put Twitter down for a second and go... <sighs> Well, and it was a good season. I'm frustrated. I wish they'd done better, but hey. Yes. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. They still have improvements to make. The defense, quite frankly, is just not up to par. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. No. Um, For the toughness angle, like just to put it to bed. And you'll never put it to to bed. (laughs) And and by that, I mean bring it up next show. (laughs) And later this show, obviously. The toughness angle is a newborn. It needs to be up every two hours to feed. Honestly, yes. (laughs) It's just awful. Which is a thing I have to know I'm so tired of it. Um, The Leafs will lose to the Boston Bruins if they try to beat the Boston Bruins at being the Boston Bruins. Like, for two straight playoff series, they've tried to out-Bruins the Bruins. Be the Leafs! The Leafs overall are a faster team, are they not? Yes. The Bru- That's not to say the Bruins don't have faster players, but they're faster. The Leafs probably have better shots overall. Mm-hmm. Probably better offensively overall. Yep. When fully healthy. They're a bit of a mess right now. Can I also say that we should probably stop connecting the 2013 Leafs loss to this to team? Twenty. 20- 18 loss. Oh, yeah. no. Because... Hey, hey, <laughs> didn't you hear what Darren Dreger said earlier this week? What happened? Dave noticed his fingerprints are still all over this Leafs team. And by that, he means the Nathan Horton contract, I'm sure. <laughs> That's embarrassing. That was an embarrassing, embarrassing. quote. Man, like, that was fi- rough. The turnover for a sports franchise in five years is astronomical. It's unbelievable. And just to connect the guys who are Marner and Nylander and Matthews and Tavares to 2013? I mean, like, was, we're really doing that still? Riley wasn't even playing yet. Gardner was in the lineup. Like, oh, Kadri was there. Kadri the was same. there. No, guys, they, it's the boogeyman. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> it's completely different. I think Sparks look- was in the organization, maybe? Mm, was he drafted yet? He had just been drafted. Like 2012, 12. I think. So Garrett Sparks was there. Well, Seventh round. They're affected by it, clearly. <laughs> clearly. Clearly. I, I don't know, man. I agree. I Every agree. game is a new game. Like, they're not thinking about that. Okay. <laughs> Tumblr. Hey. There was a Inspirational funny moment. quotes, Tumblr, hey. Jesse. There was a funny moment. Uh, <laughs> it was the Leafs' uh, big rookie year mm. uh, with Matthews and Marner and all that, where the Leafs had a 4-1 lead on Boston. In Boston, Nylander scored a hat trick. Boston came back and tied the game. And the camera pans the Leafs' bench, and Marner's just sitting there shaking his head. because, And in his face, all I saw was... When I was watching this at home, I said, if I was there, they'd be fine. <laughs> but they won that game. Nice. They did win they that did game. They did win yeah, that yeah. game because the Bruins lost their mind for some reason and pulled Rask for some goalie I've never heard of. Mm-hmm. And JVR scored like the shittiest game winner ever with a minute left. We'll take it. They won 6-5. But this is the thing. Every good team has a team that is their Achilles heel. Mm-hmm. The Capitals had the Pittsburgh Penguins. Flames and the Ducks. Flames and the Ducks, yeah. Um, the uh, Well, like, let's talk about teams that have won recently, though. Well, the Caps with the Penguins, yeah. The Caps with the Penguins. The, is... the Metro with the Penguins. <laughs> yeah, really. Except the Penguins is Philly. Yeah. yeah. Which is mm. very Which is odd. very weird. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I, I don't remember far back enough that, to know what Chicago's heel would have been. Um, but I do Everybody. know... Everybody... When well, they were bad, they were bad. But yeah, but then when they became sort of good, they still had to prove it. They're, no, Chicago was the boogeyman. So it was Chicago to L.A., yeah. and it was Chicago to St. Louis. And then they both exercised their demons at one point or another, but it, mm-hmm. t- it took a few tries. And, and remember going into that Nashville, when, the, when Nashville won that first round against them, 
um, in Nashville 2016. Too, a little bit. Nashville was like I don't think Nashville was favored going into that series, except people that watch the Nashville Predators regularly. No. Like everybody just assumed from outside that well, the Chicago Blackhawks made the finals last year. They are that good. Uh, they'll probably dispatch Nashville in five or six games. Not the case. I want to say that was Dmitry Filipovich. Everybody. Everybody has a team that's got your number. The point here is to learn how to beat that team. Because once you do, then you can beat any team that's got oh, your I number. I want them to beat Boston so bad, man. God, I hate it. So I'm gonna be I, <laughs> I I'm gonna be it. rooting against the Bruins, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I think this could go either way. I am not extremely confident going into this series, especially without Gardner and Dermott. Yeah, the Leafs can win. Oh, well the oh, They God. have to be They'll in the lineup. hopefully have yeah. them back. Yeah, no, it, they got no shot. Especially Gardner. If if yeah, if yeah. Gardner's not yeah. there, they just have no shot. Yeah, they don't. Is that bleak enough for you? That's bleak. It's they just they've and Babcock again. This is at least the third player he's done this to in his time with the Maple Leafs. He's turned Justin Hall into a non-option. He's a non-option. He had a good game and then a terrible game. I don't you know. know maybe he's just not that good. But, dude, this is the fourth game of the season. He's a non-option. It means Babcock should be fired? No, it's, it it means he's a good coach who's also dumb. Uh, no. So have you he's not an read NHL Twitter? coach. I understand what he's... I, listen, to, to stand up for Mike Babcock here, he puts the le- the, the lineup that he believes is going to win every mm-hmm. night, and he has to. And it's stupid. Okay. We've, we've talked about so, this before. So it's maybe... A bad, <laughs> it's bad know. for the long-term success of the team <laughs> to always do that. To win, get to try and win games. You're trying to win games long term. It's a long term game. You're trying to win games long term. He is long term winning Justin games. They're Hall, fifth in the league. Uh, Justin Hall was never so bad that you were legitimately risking losing the game by taking him out for Ojeda oh, in November. The results say different. They had the best season ever in the history of the Maple Leafs. They've had the best season thus far they've ever had, and they'll lose in the first round. We, we don't know that. Oh, stop it with that. Listen, we, come on. Man. You like this guy? You like this guy in the lineup? You like him better than Levo? He's a non-option. They haven't used the player. At least with Levo, we knew he could score. Justin Hall was good at the AHL level. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest here. Yeah, fine. And that's not an off- I'm not trying to be offensive to Justin Hall here, but let's be straight. Justin Hall was an unproven thing. We knew Josh Levo was good enough to make the lineup and we couldn't figure out why he wasn't playing. Yeah. The Leafs ended up trading him. Agreed. That was frustrating was to watch. Was Justin wrong. Hall was a lotto ticket. We don't know that Justin Hall has it at the NHL. What level. have we said with Sparks? He's got a frigging play. Yes. Hall has to play. I just But now it's Sparks! <sighs> but the thing is, Hall doesn't have to play. Yeah. Go, Sparks does. Sparks is the backup. They both gotta play. I also look at it like when the games matter, aka the playoffs, you don't need these guys. We don't need Justin well, Hall. Well, the, the, yeah, the Penguins you do. Did. These I'm guys lo- get hurt. But you don't bank on the injury happening. You're not like, okay... Um, we gotta play the twelfth guy on the bench because what happens if the first five get injured? Like, I don't bank no. on getting into an accident. I still have insurance. Yeah, but that's what the insurance is there for. In the back, you mm-hmm. don't think about it. You don't worry about it. It's there. Yeah, but every there two months you I play it. my insurance. You were? <laughs> wow. I don't know. I was like, uh, what? No, it was going good there for a bit, guys. Yeah, when I yeah. it too, no, but... I think no. I just I look at it and I go, I understand what Mike Babcock is doing. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Now, no, and it, by the way, I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about mm-hmm. I'm yelling at Mike now for his sins of October, November, December. Yeah, you don't do yeah. it now. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's too late. Yeah. So now it's you're going hot potato but and I think just what, throwing this. What Mike wants to do is lock down the playoff spot by December. Yeah. Okay, so fucking January or something. But you're it's like the fourth game he played against Vancouver. It's ridiculous. You think it's a waste of a roster spot? He should get more games in November versus the Senators. You could have carried to, three goalies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what I would say against you know teams that aren't that good. Yeah, right. maybe you do rotate to the, rotate those players in. But who do you take? But out? also, you're trying I mean, to win. Yes. Also, you're trying to win. You're trying to so lock you down play the your best players. They're trying to win now, and they're having difficulty because they have a non-option in the lineup. But he, that is not Mike's problem. Yeah. Yes, the fuck it is. Steven, it's ju- the coach Justin the Hall is paid to be a professional hockey player. Justin Hall ought to figure it out. 
And I'm sorry. I know that's not fair. That's, I know that's not nice. That's horseshit. How is that horseshit? That's complete horseshit. How? Adam, he's a hockey player. He needs to play hockey, not practice. He doesn't He's sit. literally... Adam, <laughs> yeah. he's the best stick and puck guy they have. Okay? He... What? That's all they let him friggin' do is stick and puck. <laughs> Wednesdays at noon <laughs> at UOIT... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been going to stick and buck a lot lately? Not, no, not as much not as recently. I should. No, no. Th it sucks because every day I'm like, oh, I finally have time to skate. Yeah. Ah, it's Friday and there's no skating Friday. It sucks. Uh, it's annoying. I but think, I think that my point is that it's on Justin Hall to prove that Justin Hall belongs. Yeah. This is Justin Hall's one shot. You might only get four games to prove it, Justin. That's, that's prove it. Just not smart. It's just not a smart way to do things. Okay. Tampa rotates. Do it lets everyone get a little piece of the pie. I don't know. I read it in a tweet, so I take it to be fact. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this tweet? That has been... Now, Kevin Paul Dumont from uh, Boston Globe. Boo. He's a pretty well-known reporter. Mm -hmm. this, <laughs> Why this is you boo him? Okay, from Boston. I get oh. it. <laughs> no, uh, he was a jerk to me years ago. Was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, well, but whatever. but then it's funny because uh, I had to interview. No him way, on, was uh, a sports guy a jerk to you? I know. No way. But then I had that to, must be um, new for you. I had to um, interview him for Hockey Central Saturday. He was uh, one of our guests. And so I, was, I don't know. I asked him some question. I don't remember. What am I going to do? Have it out with him on the radio on a show that I'm filling in on? No, no, you don't call him out. Yeah, on that. no, I don't know anything about him. Who cares? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so he said. David Back has confirmed recent oh. meeting with Cassidy, as in Bruce Cassidy, about overall play and has chosen to adopt a fighter enforcer role. And it's funny, Pete Blackford actually tweeted this and was like, so is David Back is just the face puncher guy now? Uh, wants to keep role as vital contributor, sees this way, sees this as a way to keep his roster spot, to actually continue to play. So David Backus' his skill has fallen right I, off. I didn't know he was that bad. Well, and here's the here's the three words of this tweet that are the most important that I have not told you yet. Dismisses concussion risk. Uh okay. Now okay. Dan Carcillo obviously, you know, weighed in all the on all this stuff and was not happy and he's like, I don't think this guy understands what he's getting himself into. And well, I think the other the other night, so it was Michael Furlan lit someone up on the Bruins. I can't remember who it was, and Backus challenged him. It was it, a clean hit, though, wasn't it? But oh, like a whistle, yeah, real nice, real good hit. Um, and Backus fought him and lost. He's not the greatest fighter. He's had a two fight series with Nazem Kadri, who's he's got like half a foot on Nas <laughs> and at least twenty pounds. Nas always fights way too high up. He always fights guys that are bigger than him. Wrist and Hedman he had a fight with. <laughs> Why did Naz and Hedman get Thornton? into it? I, just, I don't know. He's just a shit. People don't like him. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a, sorry, Bacchus. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I don't know. I want to say he was drafted in 2003. It's not that anymore, Dave. You're going to be on LTIR. Like, you know that... I'm pretty sure that's how this ends, right? Yeah, probably that's how next season starts. Is he, he'll be on LTIR. I'm not now. excited for him. I'm not excited for that. And, like, I feel bad. Like, okay, let's say the Bruins have some success and he wins a cup and then immediately goes on LTIR. Like, I suppose that's what you've played this whole time for is to win a Stanley Cup, but, like, mm. at what cost? I don't know. It's, but this is, okay, so this is interesting. This is a tough conversation to have. Whenever these lawsuits come up, mm-hmm. The players always discuss not knowing the risk. Now he does. Well, this is the thing, There's right? So players in the 80s and, like, 90s, and even guys like Carcillo, who didn't play that long ago, I can believe you because, like, I don't know, all the information wasn't really available until relatively recent years. Mm -hmm. Can David Backus claim ignorance here? I don't think so. Like, down the line, 20 years from now? No, I think since the When movie he hopefully does not need it? Concussion exists, the movie? Um, he kind of <laughs> ought to... No, at this point. I mean, if you don't, then you're dumb. Like, you're not paying attention. And you're not looking after your own health. Or you're just and these being, guys are fanatical about their or health. Or you're just willingly going, I want to play in the show, and so this is what I'm going to do. Like, either way, like, I, I choose to think they're not dumb. Like, they're, they're just... Yeah, I don't think they are. Ignoring it. Yeah. They're ignoring it because this is what they want to do, and I'm going to do what I got to do. So, years down the line, are these guys able to say anything? I don't think you can. No, I don't think they have a case. I don't know. 
guys who played in Carcilla's era, 90s. Well, think of 80s. even since the, the start thing, of this podcast, how much mm-hmm. we know now about concussions mm-hmm. versus what we knew five years ago. It was like sort of just sort of coming out. Yeah. When we started the show, and it wasn't really that. I long remember you ago. had a hot take. You're like, I think fighting will be gone within, you know, within a decade. And it was like, what? You're out of your mind, and it's almost gone I already. Said something like that. Well, and then there's so many. Oh my god! Like the Johnny Boychuk skate to the neck from Marner. Like I feel like we're seeing hockey's played at such a fast speed that guys sort of get upended like Marner was, more and more often. Dude, you don't want to be the next one. You don't want to be the next one that happens to. Like, no. why are... Okay, very unpopular opinion. In our lifetime, A, fighting's gone. Mm-hmm. Already said that. Neck guards become mandatory. And then people go, well, it doesn't prevent against everything. Well, prevent against something. So neck guards will be mandatory. Um, you know what else I think will be mandatory? Face protection. It's It's a little bit nuts when you think about it. Isn't it? Ryan O'Reilly doesn't play with a visor even. Are you crazy? Yeah. Knowing what we know? Oh, man. And listen, I know you know, well, hockey is this sport and that sport and that. There's too much money attached to it. There's too much money attached to it. Bills are expensive. At some point, someone's going to be like, I'm sorry, why aren't these guys wearing face protection? It's going to happen. Watch. Mm -hmm. Watch. I just wonder... I'm not when saying I think it's right. Now, but. here's here's the other side of that. Now, and there are lawyers that listen to the show. Maybe you can talk to, talk about this. It's a little bit nuts. If there were something down the road, he could say, my coach asked me to do it, and this, that was my job. Because Cassidy, he said, conferred meeting with Cassidy about his overall play and has chosen to adopt a fighter enforcer role. Oh, so now, maybe he's saying Cass was like, listen, this is what we need yeah, to do. Yeah, we can't have you in a scoring role. Well, coach, what do I need to do? Well, this is the role we have open. I'm not saying you need to do it. If I'm Bruce Cassidy, I don't say. But it might help you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's how else. Man, would that's you... where it gets sticky. That's where it you gets sticky. You don't give someone a choice. There's yeah. still a legal case to be made. But now, now, I'm just picturing it. Like, well, why'd you say this? Oh, well, he told me to. Ah, oh, it's just so messy. It is a messy thing. I just, I also think it's a shame. Um, that <sighs> the NHL salary cap does really colors fans' views of players. Like, how is it that a guy like Patrick Marlowe, who has had such an incredible impact on this team since coming here, yeah, the players, the guys love him. How do love him? How do we have a single negative thing to say? How about do we have him? a single negative thing to say about him? And yet he makes too much money for his age. Yeah. And all Leaf fans want to do is get him mm-hmm. out. He's probably going to put up uh, twenty goals, forty points, which is great. <laughs> as a like, f- what is he forty? An oxygenarian is that? Uh, is that oxygenarian, is whatever. That, is that the, is he's a pre millennial. Octogenarian, I believe, is the most. No, 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 he, he, he takes in a lot of oxygen because oh. he's older. Oxygen. So oh. he's an oxygen. No. <laughs> That's very funny. Am I an asthmatic? Am I an am I an anti-oxygenarian? If I'm an asthmatic, yes. Anyway, <laughs> the point here is that it's a he's, shame. He's at fourteen twenty, by the way. Thirty-four points, fourteen goals, twenty assists. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So he'll make forty points. I just think it's a shame that guys like Bacchus. I look at Andrew Ladd. Is another guy. I look at um, Troy Brower was that guy, ooh, but yeah. yeah, he was that guy, and now he makes like league men. Yeah, yeah. Tyler uh, Ennis got bought out. Yeah, but he was never that bad. But Ennis was never. Ennis wasn't on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say Ennis was on a Marlowe level. <laughs> no, but it's just another version it of just, this guy. This guy with that contract is hurting our team, and all, now the Leafs bring him in, and we're like, hey. All I am saying is that I think it kind of sucks. Hmm. I think the NHL salary cap kind of sucks. I think it sucks the life and the fun out of a lot. It sucked the fun out of this season, that's for sure, for me. And well, uh, and, 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 and that's, the, that's the issue I have. Like, the NBA doesn't have any problem keeping these fucking stars together. Why, they have a cap, too. And what do they have? A luxury cap, where it's extremely expensive to spend over. Yeah. And if you do that, guess what happens? That money goes to smaller market teams to help them fund their shit. 
All I am saying, can we please consider a luxury tax? Can we please consider something other than this? Yeah. This is insane. And David Backus, quite frankly, as much as I hate him every time he plays the Leafs, deserves better than this. There's that Andrew Shanahan Ladd clip. deserves better than this. Patrick Marlowe for sure deserves better than this. I'm part of that problem. I'm part of the one saying, hey, we, we may have to look at getting rid of him or LTIR or whatever it is because of the way the cap is structured. I love Patrick Marlowe. I used to wear Patrick Marlowe's number. I was a number 12 because of Patrick fucking Marlowe. It drives me crazy People that we think that we nose. need this hard cap. No, we got to have a hard cap system. That's all it can be. <laughs> How about we get fucking creative with the finances, help the small market teams, make the rich teams pay no. for them, and let them have a little bit of flexibility? It's D insane. No, Adam, li listen. Don't you see how full the building is in Florida every night? Oh, sure. They're going to be fine. They're doing great. They're going to be fine. And you know what? Five more people will show up next year when Panarin and Bobrovsky are Panthers. <laughs> that team's getting moved. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's much left there. I, I think the biggest problem Florida has is that they're not in Miami. Yeah, Arizona's fine. Yeah, Arizona's um, doing good. Finally. Arizona's fine. Um, Islanders are going to be fine. Florida's, like, Florida's tell me move. you don't make more money in Quebec City with that new arena they've got. I, how do you not, even if you're still, like, look, okay, if you're losing money in Florida, you move the team to Quebec City, yeah. and you're still losing money, let's say. What is the population just, of just, Sunrise? Just, just give it to me. Give it, hold on. Give me a second. Sorry. You move it to Quebec City, and you're still losing money. You're losing less money in Quebec City. Yes, 100%. So business-wise, it makes sense. By the way, the Winnipeg Jets, I think up until recently, lost money every year. Mm -hmm. But they're owned by a, a company and a team and a family that can just lose it. Their tickets must be so expensive. Oh, I'm sure. Because they have like 5,000 fewer seats than Scotiabank. Yes. It's crazy. But yeah. it's a crazy atmosphere. And you know, yeah. I, I hats off to Winnipeg. They've... I'm sure they've made a profitable franchise by now. But this is my point. Probably. If you want the Leafs and the Rangers and Boston and all these teams with the big money to spend, every dollar you spend in luxury tax, $2 goes to the pot that is spread around amongst the teams that don't make money. That's Isn't that how the NBA works, Jesse? I don't know the exact amount that goes. But that's, that's what it'd be. I'd rather have that. So you're spending be, $3. Along you're, lines. For every dollar you spend, you're spending $3. I'd rather have that than just the blatant sham that... Is the LTIR Clarkson Horton trade, the Lupul situation, the Pronger the to Roby fucking Dog situation, suit. trading Pronger's contract, trading Savard's contract, this buddy of mine trading Datsu. That's absurd. <laughs> Pavel, his he cost seven million against the cap, seven and a half million against and the didn't cap, cost it all. zero actual dollars. What a sham! What a farce! No, no, I'd so much rather have a luxury tax than any of this ridiculous shit. And I think some people in the office, if it were off record, might say, well, there's your luxury tax. That's what it is. You got Detroit, a team with a big old bunch of money, and Arizona, a team with not a big old bunch of money, and they got together and they made that little deal. And the Leafs, a team with a big old bunch of money, go to a team like Columbus, a team with not a big old bunch of money, and they go, let's help each other out. This contract's insured, this one's not insured. Well, you know, that's the luxury tax that we have now. It's a little bit bullshit, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit silly. Well, I, I just, I think that you got to look at it like, if we're going to commit to funding and helping along the smaller NHL markets to get them to the point of profitability. Because that is the point. The point is not for them to be there forever. The point is to develop a fan base, have the money to compete, and then hopefully, like when, when the Arizona Coyotes made that run in 2012 that was, I think, to the conference finals? It was. Mm -hmm. You know, they, that, that building was rocking. It was yeah. great. Imagine if they'd had stable ownership, a stable arena, and a good team. That would have continued. Consistently. Like what yeah. happened in Tampa when they started to be good, when they won a cup in 2004 and were consistently good ever since. Look at the fan base that is material. They were a little bad for a bit. Okay. Which is why they're good now. Right. Because they, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. they got Stamkos and then they had that one weird year where they, where well, Stamkos every, was injured. Every, everybody got hurt. Yeah. yeah. And then who did they draft that year too? It was like stupid. It was so stupid. Oh. And they find Braden Point. Like, you know what I mean? It's 2017. I don't remember. My point is this. Can we just cut the shit 
and have some fun. I hate that we hate older players now. For just, this, for yeah. just for the reason that they've earned a big fat contract. They've worked their whole lives. Their bodies are going to be destroyed after their career is over. And here we are as fans going, sure, can't wait to get rid of that guy. That yeah, sucks. I hate it. I I don't make me do math as a fan. Yeah. How like, much did he make? Three million. Cool. Like, why isn't it just Patrick Marlowe? That's awesome. You're you're right. Patrick Marlowe. The fact that Patrick Marlowe is a Toronto Maple Leaf is awesome. Is awesome. Is still awesome. No matter uh, what he makes. Anyway. Hey, let me. Okay. And and also, since we're in this, David mood, Backus, man, uh, not the greatest decision. Since we're in this mood, no, and we've said that for a long time. But since we're in this mood, how are you going to remember this leaf season? Uh, Garrett Sparks. Yeah. <laughs> Angsty and stressy. You didn't have fun. I have. I've not had fun all year. This has not been a fun season. No. no. Not, not, not at all. And I think the narratives around it. I think we've let the narratives control our enjoyment of it. And yeah. I was the one preaching in November. Hey, enjoy this. This team's fucking awesome. Yeah. But I still haven't. I haven't been able to jump over that. It's we just. It's Chris Johnston's Instagram is wonderful because he likes to post pages from the Daily Stoic. And one thing that gave me pause recently hmm. was I think it was called something like the happiness of now. And you think, when this happens, I'll finally be happy. And then it happens, and then something else pops up. And you go, when this happens, or I get this, or whatever, I'll be happy. That's been this entire damn season. When Nylander signed, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And it, no, we just move on to the next thing. Yeah. Well, that that made the season start off on uh, with a bad taste in your mouth. With Nylander. Yep. And it lasted yep. three months! And it wasn't, it wasn't even months. the fact that he wasn't playing. It was everything surrounding him not playing. Yes. It was the Reaction that to him. Everybody had a narrative to just grab onto it and keep pushing. Ah, here's all the bad things with the Leafs. They're going to be better when Neil Aaron comes back. They're going to be worse. You're going to sign for too much. He's not even that much. good. Yeah. People are still tweeting me about him. Yeah. I'm and like, that ruined the first three months of the season. Yeah. Because every game camp. was about Nylander. There was no buzz. And training camp. There was no positive yeah. buzz coming into the and season. And John Tavares had just signed. And they're bringing him in for his first season. As they signed the biggest contract in NHL the biggest free agent history. in NHL, NHL history. No buzz. Nobody could talk about it because one guy wasn't signed. None. Yeah. Like, and since then, it's always been there's something else. Dude was been, smashed free agency this year. Yeah. He maybe the best um, expensive free agent signing. Obviously with Tavares, he's been sick, and the cheapest. Yeah, Oceana. who on a league min contract not on their ELC has been better than no Ennis? Ennis has been yeah, mm. yeah, gr agreed, agreed. You know, it's, what a great bright spot. And I, and I say bright spot, the whole fucking team's great. Yeah. The whole team's a big bright spot. The the sorry, the, I'm the breakout season against the Caps was a blast, and that was not a great time for me personally. And watching those games was such a fun escape. It was such a great season. Last season, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. The season sucked. And it might be the best in Leafs history. And they finished third in the division. So dumb. Yeah, no, it's know. it's just... Are we, we're just being honest about our feelings, folks. Yeah, we can do that. I, I, I just... I don't think anybody's having a good time. I find Twitter to be extremely negative. It's just been negative. But how about this? We try to have a good time. We try. How about that? Hey, one thing I do want to say, too... I forgot to say this when we talked about the Blue Jackets earlier. Mm. But I genuinely hope the Blue Jackets make it. You know why? Because if Yarmo doesn't make those playoffs, not only is he going to be fired, it's going to set going for it back mm -hmm. 20 fucking years. Yeah. And I'm so... Sorry, I'll stop swearing. I'm so not here for that. Please make the playoffs. Just make it. I'm with... Uh, I'm halfway with you. The bl I want the Blue Jackets to make the playoffs. I want them to win a round. Because we, around. we need fewer catastrophe teams in this league. I want them to make the playoffs. Two, it'll uh, make teams stop going for it. Adam, you have not been watching this league. They're still going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, but not like, not like crazy trades like that. That was NBA stock, level. That was awesome. The stock for going for it was at like an all-time high. The cap happened... And it plummeted. Yes. And it's slowly been working its way back up. I think it'll do like one of these. It'll it'll just do a little dip if Columbus doesn't make it. I mean, it should have plummeted after Ottawa missed the playoffs, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
But they also, it was sort of a one for one. Like, Turris, as much as they, they overgave, yeah. Turris was a guy that was comparable ish to Duchesne, right? But, um, man. Oh, the 0405 lockout. It's going to stop teams from spending like crazy. The 2013 thing. It's going to stop teams from spending like. They want to win. Yeah. And you got to spend to win. I want them to trade like crazy, though. Me too. Me too, but... Trade like crazy. Um, it's, I don't think it's ever going to stop. This is an older story, but I thought it was worth bringing up because I don't think we have talked about it. Jesse Pugliarvi. Both hips. Both hips. Both hips. Had surgery on Not them good. in New York. How is it that a team can be frustrated with a player that needs surgery on both hips? And I may I remind you, this is the same team that had Oscar Kleffbaum playing with a bad shoulder for 24 months as well. Can I answer that? Sure. They are on fire flames stupid. Not Calgary Flames. The Edmonton Oilers are a stupid hockey team. Team? Stupid. Organization. Organization. Yeah, you're right. Not the I'm team. Not, I'm not crapping it's on not the It's not the player's team. fault. You're right. Everyone who works for the logo, <laughs> who's not a player, the dude, there are, and, and I, I don't want any confusion. There are people who I think are smart, who I think have done a stupid thing, and I will tell them, you've done a stupid thing. No, the Oilers are stupid. They're stupid. That's how. Like, did you, sorry, did you want to get into an in-depth discussion about this? No, I haven't. No, they're a poorly run shit heap of a hockey team. They're dumb. <laughs> they're not smart. How are they actually doing this again? Again! They almost... They almost <laughs> traded the guy. Clef bomb. They almost traded Clef bomb too. He was on the market. Moronic. Just so dumb. So, so mind-blowingly dumb. Some of the most... I don't... Are Oilers fans more loyal than Leafs fans? Yes. I think they might be. They have to be. What, all this worry about we're going for it in the playoffs um, so that people renew their season seats. What's the worry there? People are going to renew in Edmonton. Are you kidding me? What? Oh, this is the straw that broke the camel's back? <laughs> They'll be back. And I'm not saying it as a criticism towards the fans. You like what you like. I mean, shit, I followed the 14-15 Leafs. But they are breakneck speed stupid. And they're actually doing this again. It's okay. Fire someone and bring them back in another role. That'll fix it. Yeah. Big old bunch of hockey smart people. <laughs> You ran out of words there? No, I just corrected myself <laughs> mid-sentence. He was going to say something. <laughs> They're so dumb. Like, I, I just Oilers wanna... fans, you're being ripped off. It's unjust to you. It's, and yeah. I wish... I am I feel like the people who regularly listen to the show know I'm not picking on them. To anyone who's not... Who hasn't made that... Hasn't figured that out yet. You're not I'm ripping not, on Oilers not fans. ripping on Oilers fans. I want to see McDavid in the playoffs! Yeah. It was fun that one time! Hmm. <laughs> They should literally look at the season, Nuge, Nuge even, not even getting talked about, Nuge, Dreisaitl, and McDavid have had. It's absurd. And they're not going to make it. What are the Coyotes are going to make it? <laughs> and not you? <laughs> they might. They're three points out. Minnesota might make it. Minnesota not. sold! <laughs> They did the Blackhawks are rebuilding! <laughs> Awful! They're so bad! God! I can't stand how bad the Oilers are. <laughs> I love that Vancouver somehow thinks that they're in a playoff race. Are they out now? Well, 65 points and Minnesota's got 74. You're out. Uh, Sorry. That's, that's tough. It's been done. Uh, but it's probably not yeah. going to happen. Now, it's not looking good. Shout out to Vancouver. They're going to be good. They're going to be a very, very good hockey oh, yeah. team. Jim Benning has just got to put that phone down on July 1st. you got everything set. Boy. They're just just—they're really not a very deep team either. That's their other problem. No, but that's, 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 what, that's rebuilding. what rebuilding teams are, yeah. Agreed. And they're going to get another good draft, couple draft picks here. Like, they're going to be a good team again. It's going to be fun. Ulevi might still be a guy. Quinn Hughes. Yeah. And then, yeah, whoever they get this year. Um... <laughs> I really enjoyed that rant. <laughs> Sorry, like, I'm so... Can you believe... Yes. Both hips. Both hips. And Both. the player and the player is so mad at the organization, he doesn't want to be there. Would you? Like, El Elliot Friedman rarely says that bridge might have been burnt with a <laughs> player that's barely played... I don't even think he's played 25 games in the league yet. 
I don't think Maybe. I've ever heard Elliot Friedman ever say that before. No, and like Drysidle is this like rose growing out of the sidewalk, like just uh, it, just this amazing. How the fuck did he like McDavid made it straight to the show? Mm-hmm. Drysidle worked they, his way up. No, they had him in the lineup, and then they burned a year of his contract, and then sent him down to junior, and then I think they did it again. He could have been this good before this. Oh, They probably could have signed him to the extension this year. Disco- <laughs> yes! I guess if they just let him. Holy <laughs> shit! If they didn't burn... Did they burn two years? Because if they did, then I I'm think the extension sure would have did, come this yeah. year. Now, they probably would have had to pay more Despicable to get him. Despicable hockey team. Dumb organization. Dumb. Ripping the league off. Ripping hockey fans off. Every Saturday night, the Oilers rip me off by making me not watch McDavid on a good team. Watch, the Oilers are going to kill the Leafs now. That will send us into a tailspin. If the team I just called a miserable shit heap <laughs> beats the Leafs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will be kind of funny to have Oilers fans tweet it back at you. Just for fun. I- <laughs> Why are you booing me? I'm right! Sorry. Uh, yes, Adam? I didn't the, have a coffee. I tried to have spicy food instead, but spicy worse. food doesn't last two hours. Um, That's the problem. The government of Canada is once again trying to offload billions of dollars worth of crown land next to Parliament Hill that has remained virtually empty since the 60s. That, my friends, would be the new call for the Le Breton Flats area of Ottawa. Now, the federal agency says a new vision for the 22-hectare site on the Ottawa River will include a potential new site for a major event center, but the center might not include the senators. We recognize that we need to move ahead with this project, regardless of if there's a major event center there, arena, sorry, arena or event center there or not. National Capital Commission CEO Toby Nussbaum told reporters Thursday. This is an important site, and we feel the conditions are such that we can succeed without an arena. That said, we've learned that there are some wonderful capital building elements that we saw in the previous process, and we're determined to maintain that sense of vision, ambition, and boldness. Now, can we just, despite Eugene Melnick's best efforts, they're going to try again. Hey, maybe it'll be different this time. (laughs) It's like... I mean, the fact that they're saying this, they're not saying, yeah, and F you too, we'll do without you at this point? Wow. And I mean, to their credit, they're right. The point is, like, take Eugene Melnick out of this. The right move is to have the senators there. Of course. But you can't take the owner out of it. And the owner is a little bit off his rocker. Oh, I think so. A little bit. Yeah. 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 The owner, like, okay, I saw one time in a movie um, where the GM of a hockey team said, we're going to keep this coach, and then his team lost the next game, and the owner of that team, like, in his pajamas, just sort of pissed off, went, fire the coach! And then the next day, the coach was fired. It was a great movie. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, It sounds like everything Harold Ballard ever did. Hmm? Like, I'm not even kidding. Oh, no. I, no Harold Ballard like, actually did worse. Pretty sure it's like documented, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I can't stand this. Well, I mean, I want this. I want this to work. I don't care if Eugene Melnick ends up a richer man because of this. I, want I don't care. I want there to be a team in Ottawa, and I want this bloody thing to work. Get going. How hard is this? It's, it's worse. And Oilers, let me redeem myself a little bit. It's so much worse, and Tim and Sid brought this up, and Sid was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. The Sen situation is so much more dire than the Oilers. Yes. The Oilers literally just need to hire someone who knows what they're doing in terms of hockey. They have the building. The Oilers already held the city hostage. Yes, yes, they did. And they won. And they won. But it's also worked out really good for Edmonton, too, and we should say that. Yes, like at least they have it now. And there's a huge development project that's revitalized the downtown in Edmonton, which has been great. Yeah, well, and yes, it's changed the face of the city. Yes. Ottawa's a cool city. Like, I like it. I love it. The, it, it takes a bit of a beating, but, but I like it. Everybody that you talk to from Ottawa, yeah, and maybe maybe there'll be some Sens fans that disagree, but besides Brian 5 or 6, I, 
I have honestly said, even when we went up there and did the Panago Pizza event, we said, man, we had a blast here. They're like, yeah, it's kind of boring here, though. Not much to do. Yeah. Give the people something to do, for I God's sake. I think sakes. if they get that, they'll be fine. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a cool city. It's a school city. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Decent nightlife. It's beautiful. It's right. Well, by... that's the problem. Apparently, there's not so much of a decent light, night, nightlife. Well, sorry. Anymore. There's a decent nightlife in like approximately one tiny pocket of right. the city. Yeah. Um, no, I like Ottawa. I do too. Right next to Quebec. It's there's a reason it's the capital. It's actually nicely in the middle of everything. <laughs> at least when it comes to Eastern Canada, Westerners yeah. might be going, "What the?" F-? But it is. It's not. Terribly far from Toronto. Mm-hmm. It's not terribly far at all from Montreal. Could go to the East Coast if you want. Mm-hmm. I love Ottawa. I want it to be better. It's it's so much more dire. They gotta they gotta figure out like forget icing a good hockey team. Where are they gonna play? They need an arena first. <laughs> they need one. It might help with the rebuild. So Crown Royal event April sixth. All the details I have right now are the ones that I've given you. Uh, unfortunately, we don't know how yet. They're still firming things up. Uh, they wanted to pass along their apologies. We love them. I too was hoodwinked, bamboozled. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's happening. <laughs> it it's is happening. happening. Yeah. It's April six. Just keep that open. Trust me, I'll have details for you. Like it's a big event, so it, they're firming stuff up, and it's going to be amazing. It's okay? April six at Real Sports. Yeah, that's yeah. all I need to know. Yep. There yeah. you go. And we'll tell you how the rest of it later. Okay, I mean, easy for me to say, I suppose, but... Yeah. There's also going to be some exciting stuff happening coming up next week. We've got some good announcements, including playing hockey with one Steve Nangle, but we'll, we'll talk about that next week. Ooh. It's going to be fun. Does Steve have to wear his book as skates? I think so. I think I so, mean, too. It he would look to about the, book. the same. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. let's, let's do the press conference, gentlemen. It's been a long week. Let's enjoy it. The Presser. Dangle Press Conference. Um, I would like to shout out uh, Lovisa Salander. She's a Swedish goalie. She uh, she plays for the private university in the states. This oh, is I another, know that name. This is another this is lo- another tough name. Uh-huh. Hit us, Rensselaer Polytechnic <laughs> Institute, <laughs> or. Okay. RPI, as I will refer to them from oh, now going yes. forward. Uh, Wait, given this show's history, are we sure she's a goalie in Sweden? No, she's a she's Do a we know? I don't want another Sophie Merckx situation. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pre Jesse. I don't yeah, even was. know what that is. Did you ever go back and listen to the Catfish episode? No. <laughs> Eh, you're not missing much. I'll give you some homework. It (laughs) was a trip. I won't do my homework. (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, shout out Lovisa, because uh, her team lost over the weekend, or this week, in the ECAC Conference Quarterfinals, which is Division I NCAA Women's Hockey. They lost in the quarterfinals to Cornell in a 2-1 overtime loss. But in this 2-1 overtime loss, Cornell had... 128 shots. Wow. And her what? team only lost in overtime 2-1. to one. What did the other team have? Uh, like 20. Wow, what a goalie. <laughs> what a goalie. Oh my uh, god. Her team had 14 shots. Even worse. <laughs> so so how many shots a period is that? Is like, that 40? Oh wait, shoot? double overtime? It was uh, single overtime. So that's 4 periods, 120. Divided that's 30 like shots four. a period. 32 shots if you divide 128 by... If they played to full time. Yeah, because they scored overtime. So probably more like 35, 36 shots a period. And what was that thing about the Leafs versus the Hurricanes? The record for most shots against in a first period was like 33. So she faced one shot shy of the record in each period she played? (laughs) Yeah. Wow. I don't know what the timing is in the overtime goal, but yeah, 128 shots on goal for Cornell, and she stopped 126 of them. Yo, That's that amazing. must have been <laughs> yeah. the most nerve-wracking game for the goalie at the other end. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine. Please don't fuck this up. Please don't fuck this up. Please don't fuck this up. You almost all, you did. Do, yeah. all you gotta do is make uh, 13 saves. <laughs> she, she allowed the one. Like, yeah. oh, oh, God. God. 
<laughs> but yeah, shout out her, and uh, she was drafted by the Boston Pride last year Oy! for the NWHL. Hey, so great. she'll be in the N- uh, NWHL when she graduates from uh, RPI. I sort of wish. I sort of wish she'd be playing for a Toronto team, but of course it had to be with a Boston team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even though I don't think there's a no, they don't have one. No, there was not they a Toronto team in the NWHL. That they would, but they never came yeah. up with one. Hey, how about the amalgamate? It would be really cool. Yeah, it would be That'd cool. Be interesting. Yeah. Jesse, what else? Uh, this is from Izzy underscore Brinker. Mm-hmm. All things considered, who do you feel worse for? Sens fans or Connor McDavid? Sens fans. Sens fans for sure. <laughs> but you said that. Oh, said yeah. No, I Connor listen. McDavid makes 12 and a half million Hold bucks. Hold on. He's still a person? Yeah. People used that against Tavares yeah. last week, and that's bullshit. You can be a billionaire and still a Sens fan. Yeah. Okay. No, but now we have a comparable here, and it's McDavid's life. Versus a Sens fan's life. They're just As regular people fan. and have an ass what? hockey okay. team. Okay, what if Brad Pitt, who has, I assume has a pretty good life, I would hope, was a Sens fan? Are you, is, does he, who do you feel more bad Brad for? Okay. Brad Pitt Sens. or Connor McDavid? No, you're asking about the average Sens fan. I'm not asking Brad about the Pitt average. Brad Pitt is <laughs> astoundingly rich. What if he brings up the average he so should, much he should buy that them. the average is mm. Brad Pitt like? All Sens fans make $130,000 a year. Like, yeah. This isn't about money, Stephen. Yeah, fair enough. It's just whose situation do you feel worse for? Sens fans. Adam. <laughs> I always feel bad for Sens fans. <laughs> I just do. Except Sens, Sens fans seem to be handling this all with like a sense of humor, whereas McDavid just constantly looks like he's... A what of humor? A sense... Uh, no. A no, what? Sense of humor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> whereas uh, McDavid looks like he's constantly miserable. Dude, that photo they uploaded of him at FanFest at the Edmonton Mall, I'm like, who approved that photo? That's awful. He looks so sad. At least... The senators are trying not or aren't trying to win. Yeah, yeah. that's what you I think? would say. Like, if you're a Sens fan at this point, you've accepted it. They're rebuilding. Um, I got family that are Sens fans. They're definitely upset, but they're like, okay, this is what we're doing now. So we're all gonna row the boat in that direction. Whereas Oilers game. fans, it's like, Ooh, playoffs, not playoffs, renew season tickets. Connor McDavid, we're wasting his best years. Like, oh, there's a lot of a lot of angst. A little bit of angst. I don't. I don't think the Sens have won a game since the Duchesne trade. Uh, we're gonna end it on Leafs trivia. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is from I made this for one thing. I assume that one thing is commenting on the Steve Dangle podcast Reddit. Since the lockout shortened season, can you name the Leafs with the highest plus minus in each season? Oh baby, this is gonna be fun because of the names. So we'll work backwards. Mm. This year, we both know the answer. Three, Andy. two, one. Ron Hainsey. Hainsey. Yeah. You didn't say it on time. Okay. But. Sorry. All right, guys. I, I did. I'm the coordination here is not good. Hainsey. All right, Hainsey. Hainsey. Last year, who led the team plus minus with a plus 25? Morgan Riley. Adam Wild. I am going to say JVR. Austin Matthews. Oh. Hey, okay. Wow. 1617 plus 24. Defenseman. Jake Gardner. Yeah, I'm going to say Gardner as well. Jake Gardner. Hey. Well, ding, 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 ding. I remember talking about that, too, and people like, oh, he sucks. And then, oh, 15, 16, plus 8. That's a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think it is? That no is longer with season? the team. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Well, I assume that. Um, P.A. Parenteau. Colin? No. No. Um... Um, who's someone they traded? The entire team. Oh, freaking. <laughs> who's on D that year? I honestly don't even remember. Hunwick? Polak? Panuff? Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god, how am I spending this much time on this? Sean Mathias! Roman Polak. I was wow. going to say Roman Polak. Oh, 15, 16, Roman Polak led in uh, plus minus. That's a miracle. 14, 15. Plus 15. Are you shitting me? Yeah. Was anyone traded before December? <laughs> Who is it? Uh, 14, 15. Team. Someone had a plus 15 on that team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You're kidding. Okay. Plus 15. Okay, whoever had the least ice time. 
Probably. That was a bad team. <laughs> that team was <laughs> so bad. Uh, they were so bad. Uh, it couldn't have been the top line because Kessel, Bozak, and JVR always let in more Phil goals. Phil Kessel was a minus 34. <laughs> Whoa. JVR was a minus 33. Whoa. Tyler Bozak, minus 34. It's almost as though they were outscored every time yeah, they played together. That line was... That was a... Yeah, they're like, oh, atrocious. the one line they could score. Yeah, it's the line they get scored on a lot. Yeah, they were the Leafs' top scoring line and they got outscored every game. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, that was 14-15. Mm-hmm. <sighs> trying to think of... Oh, my God. Who the fuck? Who was even on the team? He played 58 games. Oh my god. I don't even remember who's on the team. Um, and no, then was it ev- a Played 58 games Codry. and then eventually was traded. I was traded. Yeah, yeah. Enough? No, he wasn't no, traded. No, he was traded no, the no, season no. year later. Um, he was traded. I have no Finished idea. Finished the season with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Oh, Daniel Winnick. Daniel Winnick. Wow, he was a bright spot. That was yes. a good sign. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, wait, was it plus 15 with the Leafs or overall on the season? Uh, do, 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 let me just check. Because that's more believable. Although I don't think he was that good with the Penguins. Nope, that was uh, with the Leafs. Mm. Yo, that's a that miracle. Is, that is the... Uh, our, I made this for one thing has been tracking them with the team. That's so cool. wow. Thirteen, fourteen. Who we got? I'll give a hint. He's a defenseman. Uh, Jesus, it's that, so dark. That I was our this. first season, right? Yeah. John Michael Lyles. I was about to say John Michael Lyles. Incorrect. Oh, Gardner. Correct answer. Carl Gunnarsson. Uh, ah, okay. played eighty games at a plus twelve. Yeah. Wow. 13, 14 leads. Wow. Uh, the worst plus minus, Cody Franzen, minus 20. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, final year, the 12, 13 Ooh. Leafs. I'll be Michael shocked. Michael Koska. I'll be shocked if you get this. Nope. Um, Nazem Kadri. I'm going to say uh, the, the guy with the mustache, Brown. Mike Brown? Mike Brown. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who? We traded him to Edmonton. Uh, no, you no, know he only what? played twelve games. Oh, okay, so that's not even. Fair. He wouldn't even accumulate. Oh, but now that was the half season, right? I'm that was ashamed. A short yeah, I'm ashamed for even asking this. Was it Mark Fraser? <gasps> Holy shit! It was. Oh wow! Well done. Woo! Mark wow. Fraser. <laughs> In God, 45 games, he had eight points, 85 penalty minutes, and was a plus 18. I can't believe I got that. <laughs> I that can't believe damn I got Steve. that. That's, wow. uh, that's an all-time answer. Wow. <laughs> wow. Man, remember when people were talking about him too? Like, wow, he's a what a what a find he is. Oh, his plus oof. minus is just outstanding. He, Out of the um, league in two years. He uh during that 2013 Bruin series, he suffered a shattered face. Yeah. Oh. He played yeah. four four playoff games. Yeah, yeah, and in game four he suffered a shattered face. He got a puck right to the face and broke his orbital bone. It's a gruesome. That's photo. brutal. No. He's he's been uh, outspoken um, in the media recently. He's been on Twitter. Um, he his final pro season in North America. I want to say he was with the Sens. Mm-hmm. They brought him on as a tryout, and uh, he said it's the worst experience he's had uh, in his professional career. And he's from Ottawa. Right? So, mm-hmm. like, he wants them to succeed, and he's like, nah, they're garbage. Wow. Yeah. Mark uh, Fraser. Closest Mark to Fraser. number without going over wins our final question. Okay. okay. How many penalty minutes did Colt Nor have in the thir- 12 13 season? So that's the lockout. In 44 season. games, how many penalty minutes did Colt Nor have? Closest without going over, Price is Right Rule. 105. 140. 155. Ooh. Where'd he go, Steve? Ooh. Wow. And that's the end there of my question. Goes. Well, he sure punched them to the playoffs. <laughs> he did. <laughs> punched them right into the playoffs. <laughs> Man, there was that one game. <laughs> there was a face there, and he punched it. it yes. Yeah. Punched playoffs right in the face, and he said, take that, playoffs, we're here. Take that. <laughs> that's that, playoffs. <laughs> hey, playoffs, take this. <laughs> there was that one game against Montreal where the Leafs were killing them. 
And then Montreal tried to start shit, and they're like, "You, you want to bet?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like he punched someone. I want to say it was like Renee Bork. Like it was basically unprovocated, just yeah. wham. <laughs> That's <laughs> how they got into the playoffs. Pow! Oh. Right in the kiss. <laughs> 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 right line, in there. That line was absurd. It was crazy. Was it? Like, wasn't it Jared Smithson, <laughs> Frazier McLaren, and Colt Nor? Oh, uh, yeah. Carlisle totally gooned it up too. It was yeah. No, it might have been or. McLaren Smithson. It might have been McClement that game. Ooh. I'm pretty sure he put Frazier out there same shift. <laughs> Cause that was a great one too. I, th- I want to, oh, who was it? Someone tried to mug Kadri one game and Frazier comes out of nowhere and goes, the fuck you know? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> he just beats the shit out of him. Uh, uh, it was good times. Uh, no, they the weren't. Hockey was no. fun, but also not very smart. <laughs> Well, that was a fun episode, guys. Was it? <laughs> we started no, with Catch It Guy, we ended with Colt Norn, Fraser McLaren. It's good. That seems like eons ago, by the way, doesn't it? Fraser McLaren? No, no but we those the show. guys are all thinking about this series, and they're going to affect how we play against Boston in the playoffs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Colt Norn is really going to have an impact on the 2019 Leafs. He follows me on Twitter. I'm not sure why. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. I've yeah, never well, heard a bad thing. Why would he not be? I don't know. <laughs> Enforcers are always good guys. Carcillo does too. How could you not like hockey? <laughs> I got a follow from Dan Carcillo uh, a few few months ago, and I was like, so "Really?" really? And right. Sean Mathias. Yeah. And Sean Mathias, you got Sean Mathias? I think so. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Is that why you you used him? You're like, "Oh, I'm going to slip a little Sean Mathias." No, because I was trying to think of Leafs from Get that little year. Sean Mathias love. I would love to have Sean Mathias on the show and see if he can name all his teammates from that season. <laughs> <laughs> name everybody on the uh, yo. There's no way name we have got to do that. He couldn't. He couldn't. <laughs> There's no way he could. Oh, man, that would be fun, though. He was traded to Colorado. Um, and then ended up in Winnipeg the next year? Mm, Signed there? I think yes. So. Yeah. Um, I uh, I was at the Sabres game the other day. I'm going to be going to the game on Monday. I don't know who they're playing. Tampa? Oh, thanks for the invite, man. I That's cool. It's, it's my birthday <laughs> presents, actually, from my wife. Oh, you're going to a Leafs game? Oh, wow. Away. Wow. That's so, that's so out of the ordinary for a birthday present. You know? I was having a bad day. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I got home from ice surfing and there was a envelope on the waiting on the computer from SL. Mm. And on the envelope it said something to cheer you the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I opened it and it was two tickets. Sometimes Aww. it's good to have partners that do that. Yeah. yeah. But I was at the Sabres game and uh, I met someone after the game waiting for my train at Union Station. And he goes, yeah, I watch your podcast all the time. I go, oh, thanks, man. He, he, he's like, uh, yeah, I'm a family doctor. Um, I see you all the time. Like, you're back. No, oh, really? <laughs> so all this, do, do you ever wonder why I do this? Mm. Oh, it's because you're sore? I'm not fidgeting. Yeah, it's to elongate my spine oh. and like take pressure off it, and it's actually really nice. So is the guy going to... Did he offer to treat you? Yeah, I was like, can you prescribe naproxen for me? <laughs> or just or no, kick I me don't. in the back and uh, correct this, for God's sakes? You know, I feel like that might not do it. Mm. That might not do it. No, it's actually... I've been getting much better. Good. Finally. Finally. I've had Hopefully people comment on my... I'm cracking my jaw, too, on the podcast, because I like... You've always done that, though. Bottle, yeah, because I've got TMJ. Huh. Jesse, what ailments do you have? Oh, Nothing. Fuck. He's fucking Jesse. Anyway. Anyway, hey, we love you. I have two awesome syndrome. Uh, <laughs> I'm diseased with two awesome. It's fatal. Have a, great, <laughs> have a great day to everybody but Nick Barton, who's getting off easy. Nick Barton. Also, I tweeted, I'm kidding. if Adam Wilde was a Panago pizza, which one would he be? I'll How many forehead the, jokes? Uh, no, How zero. How many chin jokes? Zero. There oh. are, some of them are like thick crust because you're big booty, Ooh. which is really funny. Thick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Montreal Smoke Meat because you're a fan. I'll read some of the best ones next press conference. Nice. Hey, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, <laughs> screw the podcast one, mine. <laughs> I'm less than 3,000 subscribers away from 100K and I would really appreciate Silver it. Silver play button. Silver play button. Oh. Or a bronze? Bronze. Oh, silver. Oh, silver? Okay. I wish there was a bronze one. I'd have it already. (laughs) Oh, well. Anyways, Adam was trying to close the show. Yeah, let's go. We iceberg. Hey. So here's the tour date for the book. What about that shit guy? Cat shit. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.